Hello, my name is Jen and I'll be your nurse for this disclaimer. The Duck Talk podcast may contain language and subject matter that may not be suitable for younger patients. User discretion is advised. Also, there would definitely be spoilers for any and all anime being discussed. Be advised if a series you haven't finished yet is brought up. And the opinions expressed are those of the individual patients and do not necessarily reflect the Dub Talk Dub Talk podcast as a whole. And to all listeners out there, remember to follow COVID-19 safety protocols, remain a safe distance in public, and wear a mask, and follow up with your Dub Talk podcast in seven days. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dub Talk Clinic. I am your registered physician, Dr. Spaceman Hardy, MD, and tonight I am joined by my lovely assistants, Nurse Stephanie, Nurse Gigi, and Nurse Noah Clue. I assure you all, my medical degree is very real and totally not drawn in crayon, and that my three nurses (laughs) willingly agreed to wear the candy striper outfits of their own accord and are not being coerced or blackmailed in any way whatsoever. No, no, no. But anyway... No, no, we got all of our medical training from watching the show, the Netflix series Ratched, and I I think that that's viable reason enough to put us in charge of your uh, sick relatives. I still need to watch that show. I hear it's fucking bonkers. It, it I watched bonkers. Grey's Anatomy, so who's gonna make out? <laughs> because this is this is Gigi, and we know that she would want that. Is that so show still running? That's my yep. question. Yes, it was anyway. on like back when I was in middle school. It's still fucking going, dude. It's just it's a it, it's a soap opera at this point. Just put it on daytime like it belongs. Speaking of bonkers. With the world currently in the midst of a global pandemic, it's never been a better time to be focused on one's personal health and safety. So the reason I've called you in for this appointment is to do a detailed and thorough examination on the English dub of Aniplex and David Productions' 2018 series, Cells at Work. So what is Cells at Work, you ask? Simply put, it is a story. A story about you. A tale about the inside of your body. Enter the fascinating world inside your body where roughly 37.2 trillion cells work hard for you 24 hours a day and 365 days a year. The world is a dangerous place for a red blood cell just trying to get her deliveries finished. Fortunately, she's not alone. She's got a whole human body's worth of cells ready to help out. The mysterious white blood cell, the buff and brash killer T-cell, the nerdy neuron, even the cute little platelets. Everyone's got to come together if they want to keep you healthy. So without further ado, let's start off this operation and dive deep into the heart of this show's dub to find out just what makes it tick. Is it bad that for a hot second when you said, it's a story, I'm like, no shit. (laughs) I was like, I wanted to come in so bad because you paused. I'm like, I want to make a comment. (laughs) No, really? No, really? I didn't know. Does this story have characters? (laughs) And a plot? 37 oh trillion of characters. <gasps> oh, shit. And we're going to talk about all of them. I'm oh going God, home. No, please. I'm going to bed. Good night. Welcome to the Dub Talk mini series where in another every installment we will cover an additional million characters until we get through every one in this cast list. Noah, this isn't a mini series. This is like a. This is like. This is this is our whole, whole. It was made just for us. We're gonna be here for the rest of fucking eternity. Anyways, the best place to start our diagnosis is with the brains behind the dub, our ADR director, scriptwriter, and narrator. For our ADR director for the show, we have Christian Lamont. Our scriptwriter is Blair Rowan, and playing our narrator is Mrs. Karen Strassman. Christian Yamont has directed shows such as Sirius the Jaeger and One Punch Man Season 2. Blair Rowan has written shows such as Blockade ba- Blood Blockade Battlefront and Kakegurui Season 2. And you've heard Karen Strassman in shows such as Lucky Star and Monster. So, uh, Nurse Noah, what is your, uh, what is your diet? <laughs> I love that Noah's a fucking nurse, hey, and hey, you hey, mentioned hey. the candy striper uniform. I'm like, I kind of want to see that image now, because <laughs> I feel like that'd be hilarious. Do you well, want me to bring my nurse costume over this weekend? Oh, <laughs> Fuck absolutely. yeah, do it! You do have. it, Gigi! Do it! No, there's an exception. It's Halloween! Only, oh, Gigi, only if you've got, like, the little paper hat. Like, the, the one that they haven't worn since the 1950s. 
I have one sitting right here. It's on a headband. Yes, absolutely. Okay, photo party coming up. Do it. Yes. Do it. Bring it with you to Mich- Michigan, Gigi, yeah, and I- fucking make him wear it and take pictures. Yeah. And then we put those pictures on this episode, because fuck you, that's why. You know, what's really sad is that uh, of all the people in this call, I am the only one who is actually married to a nurse. Yes, my wife, Jennifer, is actually a is an LN right now and is in school to get her RN certification. So not only Go could, Jenny! So not only could I wear uh, Gigi's nurse outfit, I could also wear Jenny's scrubs, which are actually what nurses wear nowadays because they're, for, you know, that, that's just what they wear in hospitals now. But we're not, I was not talking about this dub at all, which by the way, thank you Hardy for advising us to check out this show because I probably would not have gotten around to it if you hadn't. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, um, and I, I'm, I don't know why uh, you uh, said that you wanted to cover uh, the Inside Ralphie episode of the Magic School Bus, and I don't have that many notes on it, but <laughs> I mean, I guess if you want to cover a Canadian show for once, I, I'm all down for that. <clears throat> okay. Oh, man. So, Miss Frizzle, voiced by Lily Tuck. Oh, wait, that's the wrong episode. I'm sorry. About to say, like, bitch, I would totally be down to talk about Magic School Bus. I, I got <laughs> it right here. It's my childhood. Magic I, School Bus is my childhood. I had the old computer game for fucking, um... Oh, my God. Magic School Bus to the human body, actually. That so... appropriate. But th- this show is much more uh, is much more educational than that, and uh, than the Magic School Bus, because it, it is stretched out to 13 episodes, and every episode not only has different characters, but the the body it takes place in gets sick with something new, it seems, in every episode. And we'll, we'll talk about this when we get to the villain section, but all of those had to be directed in a very consistent way, because it's a huge cast. So, uh, how did Christian do on this? Um, well, it's less comedic than the Japanese, um, and that's not a, uh, that's mostly a good thing, because um, I was watching the show in dub, with the subtitles on, so I could actually figure out how to spell some of the words that were on the screen in front of me. And they do take quite a few liberties with uh, adapting the content, but it doesn't lose any of the meaning. So um, I guess this is more of a compliment to Blair's uh, adaption of the script. Um, and I'll point out like individual sections uh, here and there, but here's just like one example of how they adapt stuff. Sometimes to make it even funnier, okay, so in the flashback episode where we look at the T-cells as they're in, like, training camp, they're like an army training camp, uh, there's a line where the drill instructor says, um, what was it, we're gonna separate the useful from the useless, all well and good, but we can, fi- we can do better, so in the dub, they change that to, we're going to separate the, what is it, yeah, we're gonna separate the T-cells from the wannabe cells, I'm like... Yep. It's a little okay, funny. I remember that. Yeah, there's like lots of little bits that are like a little funnier in the in the English dub. So yeah, I have no qualms with this, but because I watched it in with the subtitles on, I noticed a ton of adaptations they made to make it just a little more palatable to yeah palatable mm-hmm. to an English audience. And with content this dry, with uh, a lot of the let's describe medical illnesses, blood parts, body parts, and all that, I appreciate that they did that. And I also appreciate uh, the narrator, and uh, Lilac was talking about this uh, before we started recording, that they yeah. could have gone like an Okami-sama route, or a how heavy are the dumbbells you lift oh, route. Oh, thank God they didn't. Yes. Because... It would have been such a different show, and this show does not call for that no. at all, honestly. Because yes. in those shows, the narrator is a wisecracking observer who is kind of mocking the characters through all out, instead of actually mm-hmm. explaining what's going on in the show. Uh, this doesn't do that. Karen was told, okay, you're going to explain who the characters are, like, with pop-up title screens. Like, it does the full-on freeze frame, cut to an Osama Dezaki uh, watercolor image, and explain what they do in the body. And she does it really well. It's consistently reliable, it's informative, and it's not that it's not monotone at all. So, on the production side of things, this is uh, easily one of the... Uh, l- how do I put this here? One of the most powerful... Uh, dubs that uh, I've heard so far this year. I'll, I'm mostly going to agree with what Noah has said, and I might repeat a couple of things. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to feel about the show itself, because it's this weird amalgamation of, like, Noah and I were talking about this before we were recording when we were in for you and Gigi. Like, I described it as some, like, weird mix of shonen slice of life thing. And Noah was like, this is more like high school drama to me. And we kind of came to the conclusion of like, maybe this is like a My Hero Academia kind of theme and tone to it. And I'm like, I can see that. So, um, which kind of makes sense for this show. 
Because this show, God, it's so wacky. And I never thought I would... There was an episode relating to allergies. Oh, the po- cedar pollen allergy. Cedar pollen. Cedar. Cedar. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But um, I, I personally have outdoor allergies. I don't know specifically what I'm allergic to, but I just do. Um, I never thought I would learn about outdoor, about allergies and how it actually processes mm-hmm. in depth like that. And some of the terminology and things like that, because I have my own allergy meds. Like, I take an antihistamine. I have, like, a steroid, which is my goddamn Benadryl, basically, I take every night. Um, so I'm like, oh, I recognize some of this. So this is how this shit tends to work. <laughs> Granted, <Yeah>. it's not... <laughs> Obviously, it's not an accurate depiction. It's because not? I, I, well, I would love to imagine a huge-ass little mini-robot going around and destroying shit in my system, but you know... Hell yeah! I don't think that's true to life. Um, but the direction and the writing on the show just make everything about it so much fun. Um, again, the show itself, I don't know how I feel about it. Um, it's a weird amalgamation of things, but... The dub is rather solid, I think. The It has a f- fun cast all over the place with some fun energy. And the dub, I will also agree. Like Noah said, you, they pro- like it did sound like they took a little bit of liberties. To me, I, unlike Noah, I didn't watch this with the subtitles on because I just didn't want to try to spell shit. Spelling is my biggest issue i, I needed spelling. to i needed to know how to spell s no 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 no. good on you phot- good on you a genetic effect and what, what's another one here vascular constriction know. i don't know but good on you but um <laughs> writing wise like i didn't need the subtitles or watch japanese for me to pop to me to get the picture of okay it's not a one-for-one translation and there are probably some liberties that were taken with this script. I mean, l- later on in the show, someone's called a butt munch, and that got a little chuckle out of me. And I'm like, okay. Like, some of the name-calling moments, for sure, I'm like, okay, Japan normally probably wouldn't say something like that. So clearly Blair had a, had a little bit of fun with the script, which is great. And again, I will also agree, in terms of Karen... Karen, first of all, is sweet and gentle, and she's just like, this is how this works. It's almost... It's not, like, National Geographic levels of narration. <laughs> really? Like, if that makes sense uh, in terms of tone and voice. But it gets pretty close to it. But, again, I appreciate that there weren't any weird liberties taken with her dialogue specifically. Because the narrator's role is a mix of exposition exposition, and um, terminology explanation. So... With what Karen has to do, first of all, those weird, freaking complicated health terms, good on you. <laughs> I would not be able to manage that. But um, serving as this function, so that way the viewer understands what's going on and who these are and how they function, I think it worked very, very well. So, overall, I would say, in terms of directing and writing, it's rather solid. And I do love Karen's narrator. It's almost National Geographic to me. Not quite, but it's almost there. So, so what you're saying More is like that PBS. This... More like what? PBS. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I can see it. PBS. I can see it as a PBS kind of thing. Like either PBS or maybe Discovery to an extent too. Like Discovery's not on that level like National Geographic is. It would but, have been. Um, it would have been uh, the Learning Channel before they started doing all those reality shows. Oh no! Probably. Yeah, that makes sense. I learned a lot from a baby story on TLC. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I would hope you I would hope you did, considering you have three babies of your own. Yes. Also, uh, sex sent me to the ER. <laughs> For some reason my parents turned off the TV before that ate him on. Wait, that's a thing? That was a thing? Yeah. That is a thing. You've never yes. watched that? No. You gotta watch that. <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to look this shit up later just so I can get a laugh. God damn. <laughs> uh n- Nurse Gigi, what are you, what is your diagnosis? Once again, it's going to be another Dub Talk episode where I have the complete opposite opinion as everybody else. Oh boy! Here not we go. A, that's not a, don't that's worry, not Hardy. A bad thing. This is the longest I will talk about anything this entire episode. All right. So first of all, who wants to date things or find old 
memes that could have been memes, but they're too old to be memes. Anybody ever heard of a show called Cartoon All Stars? Just say no. Oh, oh. yeah. There's I don't know that. Wild and wonderful ways to say no. Yes, thank you. I knew someone would. Okay, for for those who don't what? know, back okay, back in the was it the George, yeah, it was the first George Bush era. They were like really heavy on the anti drugs thing. So they thought, what's the best way to convince kids watching Saturday morning cartoons not to do drugs? Got it. We'll license like 15 different cartoon characters, put them in this half hour special where they basically narc on a kid telling him, hey, stop doing drugs. And he does. And, that's and the they show. like, they go through the body and show you what the drugs will do to you if you take the drugs. So everybody like gets high. Like these kids get high and then they show you what happens to your lungs and what happens to your brain all while like the fucking smurfs are narrating it or something like that so that sounds stupidly amazing and why do i want to fucking watch it's it on youtube that's where i saw oh, it great it, it's so great amazing. okay another thing to add to the list for later um so this whole time i was watching this anime that's what i thought of and I was like, okay. wow, this would have been way more interesting if it, they put in people from different anime, like <laughs> um, that other show, Otaku Quest or Dragon something, where they put those people from ReZero in it. I don't know. Isekai Quartet. Oh, oh Isekai Quartet. You. Like, that would have been way more interesting to me. And I would have been like, oh, I'm learning something and watching anime. This is great. Um Instead, I thought this whole thing was, I didn't, I couldn't even classify it as anime. Like, it was just, like, an educational cartoon to me, more than anime. Yeah, like, I feel that they could show this to kids in school, but, like, their Mm. parents would complain because there's too much violence in it. Or maybe it's something they could show to little children to tell them to wear their fucking masks. And... Like, this is what's going to happen if you fucking get sick. All these little cells in your body are going to die. Wear your fucking mask. So, (laughs) I mean, that's what I was thinking of the whole time. (laughs) And So so do you not classify something like um, Shirobaka as anime either? Since that's educational about, you know, how anime is made? I've never seen it, so I can't comment on it. Okay. Don't don't be surprised, because I don't watch much. Um, I, I... Maybe that's what this was going for in the Japanese or in the English. I can't really tell. Um, Mm. And unlike everybody else, I thought it was pretty true to the Japanese, except for a couple of one-liners thrown in here and there, because I also watched it with the subtitles on. Um, Okay. And, you know, I thought it it stayed pretty true to the translation. Um, I was kind of bored. Be real with you. I was really I, bored by this. Okay, I, I was expecting Earl- that reaction from at least one person. So he, he, I, I'm gonna say this. I will agree. Early on, I was a little bored as I was trying to get into this. Eventually, later on, there were one outliners that got a couple little chuckles from me. But like, I will admit, I did have my moments where it seemed to drag too. Like the parts of the show that were the best parts were the ones that had nothing to do with medical terms. Like the ones where yeah. they had the um. With the, the kids, the flashback, and the drill sergeant. Like, mm-hmm. that one was pretty yeah. funny. Episode like, I liked nine. that. That was a fun one. Um, Thymocyte. A thymocyte yeah. is a T-cell that has not matured properly yet. Oh, God, please stop. So. <laughs> no medical terms right now, please. So, I just, I really felt like I was, like, kind of being being educated. And considering the fact that I, like, look at my Twitter timeline every day, I know what COVID-19 will do to my body. So, I, I, I don't want to watch that when I'm, like, watching a cartoon or an anime. Um, so, hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not in the right mindset to watch this now. But I really just kind That's of found fair. it, like... I was talking about this with somebody in another show that I did, and I said, this feels like not anime to me. Like, this feels like a movie. Mm. But if I watch it this way, it feels like anime to me. So this, like, really (laughs) didn't Mm. feel like anime to me. Um, I just felt it was a cartoon that was trying to teach me stuff. Um, So, yeah. I mean, personally, I can can see that. It's... Like, again, I watched Magic School Bus as a kid, and I had the stinking computer game for um, the human body, specifically one. I, I can understand and see that 100%. Like, and it does come off as that sometimes. To me. Like, And that's good if that's what the aim mm-hmm. of it was. But if it was f- just for entertainment, like, I wasn't entertained by it. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that's a fault oh, yeah. of the dub, but, I mean, 
Mm. I think it could be more fault on the sh- of the show itself. Yeah, personally, the, the dub did exa- in my opinion they did exactly with what they had to work with mm-hmm. the perfect translation to this. Like, I, I don't know what they could have like maybe punched it up with celebrity voice actors and cartoony sound eh. effects or what have you. But well, no, no, not with it. not in any Plex world. No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that might also be a huge thing to do with it because. When you guys were talking about the narrator and saying, oh, wow, I'm glad it's not like Lucy Christian and Okami-san, I was like, oh, wow, I wish this were like Lucy Christian and Okami-san. I literally <laughs> wrote that down. Okay. I was I like, mean, that's, that's if fair. she just would have had, wrong. like, if this performance would have just had a little bit more, like, funny moments or, like, comedic timing, I would have been like, oh, my God, wow, I'm kind of interested again. Um, mm-hmm. But I thought um, Karen sounded very educational. I thought it mm-hmm. was fine. Um yeah, PBS is about right. Maybe like yeah. on Sesame Street, but with Maybe. more with yeah. more consonants because right. words are kill. harder to spell. I, mean, I would kill or pay good money for the alternative world where clips of this showed up on Sesame Street. <laughs> oh god! Well, I <laughs> mean, I have a feeling that like maybe that's what they were going for, and Anaplex is super like to the letter. So it's true. I, yeah, I, I feel like maybe the whole thing kind of suffered just because because of that i don't know i just it was all right it is what it is i mean i've definitely heard worse and not to, as a as a thing for casting or directing or acting of the people i just it was a dub they did all right yeah. i mean people spoke and it was fine people spoke it, and it, it was worked fine. it worked it, it is what it is yeah <laughs> Well, um, in Doctor's opinion. <laughs> now, 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 hold, now, hold on. In my, no, no, okay, in, my prof- in my professional, professional medical opinion. opinion. <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed this. Um, for one, I am a fan of the Chris Rock film, uh, Osmosis Jones. <laughs> so, mm, you would. That explains a couple things. I knew that was going to get mentioned. <laughs> Is it bad that I've never really watched it? You don't have to. So you can compare that. You can compare it to the Pixar film Inside Out. Mm. No, you cannot no, compare well, it to that. No. I... Honestly, you can't compare it to Inside Out. Because Inside Out is vastly different. Because it deals with emotions and, like, emotions and trauma, kind of, I guess, too. So things that happen in Cells at Work can actually happen. It, your, emo- your sadness emotion cannot get sucked into your core memory receptors and get sucked into yeah. the abyss of forgetfulness. That's not how think anything works. Well, anyways, 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 anyways. Um, yeah. yeah, I enjoyed this it, because it is basically edutainment. I think the, the mm-hmm. original manga is like that as well. Um, yes. Okay. And uh, I, I didn't really learn all that much because <laughs> I did find it a bit entertaining seeing this kind of bonkers reimagination of how our body works. Um and I think everyone, I think the narrator does her job fine because I agree with you two. I don't think this, this narrator needed to be played for laughs because this is sort of like an educational purpose. I think the laughs come around from the, the over exaggerated reactions from the cells playing off each other. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I like. And I like red and white's dynamic. I like how a lot of the other cells play off of each other. That and is, I, yeah, I think they have really good chemistry, uh, good body chemistry, actually. Oh, uh, Jesus. So, yeah, I guess what you could say, I guess what you could say about this dub, is it goes straight to the heart of the matter. No, come on. Oh, <sighs> oh yo, body puns. Um. We're going to be getting a lot of this tonight, aren't we? Oh, you have no idea. I'm the closest oh. one. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, great. Hey, We're, uh, hey, hey gonna, Lilac. I, this hole was made just for me. I hate it here. Lilac, does, does Andrew have that bat? That he had the other night, because I think we're going to need to bring and it back. I'm, I'm, ba- I'm back home, first of all, and Andrew's not with me. But yes, he does still have the bat at his place. Okay, okay. But anyways, 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 anyways. Um... Yeah, I think it's a it's a solid dub, and um, it's actually fun fact. This is technically the first comedic dub that Aniplex ever made. This was before. Is it really? Yes, mm. it is. That shows. 
you had <laughs> shows. Show you had shows like Durarara and Blue Exorcist that had comedic elements to them, but they were mo- mainly uh, action series. This is the one that's mostly comedy with action. But, I mean, I, I make... kind of disagree with that sentiment. I think it sells at work is pretty much in line with something like Blue Exorcist and da 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 genre wise, because it has a lot of action and some comedic elements to me. I I think it's flipped, honestly. I mean, I could definitely say it's it's more comedic than either of those two shows. Mm-hmm. I mean, even if you discount the the very 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 traumatic ending, of, well, near ending of the show, it, oh, you, God. you watch it. Yeah, you do watch it more for. The, the light-hearted comedic parts than you do for the, oh my god, how what disease is going to attack the body this week? I'll admit towards the end of the show that I, that I accidentally might have fallen asleep because I'm tired today. <laughs> <laughs> I will admit that, so I don't 100% remember episode 12. <laughs> oh, let me, um, yeah, well, that was, the, that was the episode where they tell you how babies are made. Oh, good to know. I'll In graphic to detail. Today. Yes, absolutely. Yay! They, they outsource this to Studio Arms, the hentai studio. Oh, God Oh, my it. God. <laughs> I hate it here. Can I go home now? No, 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 no. no. You, you get back here. You get. We, we need all nurses on staff. Uh, I fucking quit. <laughs> so, uh, are we good to move on to our first set of characters? Yes, yes. which should right. probably go by rather quickly. Yes. So. Uh, before we go into the good parts of our body, we have to talk about the bad things. Yay. The germs, dun, dun, dun. the diseases, the bacterium. nasty bacteria. Yes. So we have a group of villains, probably usually one episode villains, one shot, but they're the ones who made the most, who stood out the most with their their antics, if you could say. Mm. Uh, for episode one, we have Pneumococcus. Episode two and ten, we have Staphylococcus aureus. In a few episodes, we have Pseudo- Pseudomonas, which is a big it's green one-eyed monster names, that looks like he came man. straight out of Monster Rancher. <laughs> True facts. We have Basilis Sirius, who attacks during a batch of heat stroke. And perhaps the worst one of all... Cancer. Fuck that constellation. Yes. Literally, cancer. Uh, playing Pneumococcus is Ben Diskin. You've heard him in villainous roles such as Kill a Kill and Excel World. Playing Staphylococcus is Christina V. She was Mosquito Girl in One Punch Man and Swan in Fairy Tale, Fairy Tale Dragon Cry. Playing Pseudomonas, uh, he was one of the Chimera Ants in Hunter x Hunter, and he's also Brock from Pokemon in a lot of shows. Yeah. Frank hmm. ba- Basilis is Joe Zieha, who was in uh, Stardust Crusaders and the Netflix dub of Psyche K. Okay. And playing the cancer cell is Koi Dao. <laughs> that kind of <laughs> screwed with me a little bit. Who oh, was the... He was the uh, the monster movie ghost in Rila Kuma and Kaoru, and even though this is an antagonist, he is annoying. He's the main character in Sw- Sword Guy. Which, don't watch that show, because it's awful. It's good to know. Alright, I'll go first. Uh, so, first of all, we're going to talk about Mr. Ben Diskin. Um, since he was in episode one, I liked the effect that they put on his dub voice. Yeah. <laughs> So you could tell that it wasn't just him speaking through a microphone. They, they had to digital that, that shit a little bit. Um, spoiler, this is the only one where I like the effect. Um, he sounded like Skeletor. <laughs> you know what? I can say it. Not that that's a bad thing. It just literally sounded like a cartoon, which is going to be my whole thing as I go through this episode. Um, Christina V, she had a bad girl voice, but not like the villain dominatrixy voice that it could have been which i was kind of surprised by that like you could have taken this way over the top and it 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 wasn't so that was a thing um by this point i was over the effect that all the villains had on their voices uh bill rogers i have no idea who this is i know what the character looks like i never (laughs) remember him speaking 
Oh, so, that, it was in, in the flashback episode where uh, we see baby red blood cell, and she kind of gets separated from the group. He's that's the probably one. the most prominent one, yeah. He, he, yeah. Like, you know, um, ah, what do we have here? A little urethroblast. Why, I think I'm going to enjoy this little <laughs> snack. <laughs> I'm going to oh, take Jesus. a hard pass on that one. Um, <laughs> as as for Joe's... <laughs> Josie You're not Joe. supposed to want to turn him into a body pillow. I I'm just saying I don't remember it. So okay. um I can't think of him without thinking about Claude and I can't think Thank about Thank you for bringing that up. I can't think about him without thinking about Mr. Love. All you Otome fans out there, I don't know why you're listening to this episode, but to each their own. <laughs> um it because was, they love us, that's why. It was okay. It kind of sounded like a cracked out Hisoka. <laughs> Okay. Well, but, I but, like I like that description. But Hisoka was like Keith Silverstein and he was amazing. This sounded like a cracked out Hisoka like maybe somebody was like drinking beforehand before they got in the booth and wanted to murder little children. <laughs> um I'm not saying that it was bad. It sounded like cartoon character. Um again, not saying that that's bad because if I take it as a cartoon, it's way more funny for me. If I take it as an anime, I mean, it is what it is. And as for Koi is that how you say his name? Koi Dao. Koi Dao. Koi Dao. Um, he had a nice death. But <laughs> I uh, I could tell like nice through death. the first episode that he was hiding something. So I thought this was probably one of the, the best acted parts in the whole show. So okay. good on ya. That's all I got. I mean, last I checked, this is a cartoon. This is a, Wait, this is a, this is yep. a discussion that we don't need to have on this episode. That's oh, true. But we could have that we avatar discussion and we're not gonna. That's true, because we don't have enough space on our hard drive to record that long. Of Nor do we have the patience. I feel like I sound very angry. I just feel very passionate. All right. Majority of these, I'm actually going to be relatively quick, too. I'm going to start with Ben. I'll admit, I thought Ben was only in this for the first two seconds of the first episode, and that was it. <laughs> and then he, I wrote the first that first note down in my notebook about it. But, um, and he came in a bit more. It, <laughs> I don't really ever get to hear Ben play really kind of higher pitched <laughs> hammy villain roles. And That's I will I admit it. it was, I will admit it was a lot of fun. However, he's only there for that one episode. So there's not much really to discuss. He's, he's fun. He's hammy. It's fine. Um... Christina V, thank you for bringing a Mosquito Girl, because this Christina's character here is Mosquito Girl, but bacterium form. <laughs> That's basically my best way to describe it. Mosquito and Girl? From One Punch Man. One Punch Man? Oh, Jesus Christ. You've never seen One Punch Man in bedding, right? Anime? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Stop being an <laughs> asshole. God damn it, Noah. <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> no, anime. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Prof. Um, no, but that's really what this performance reminded me of from Christina is Mosquito Girl. Same tone, same attitude, same everything, which is fine. It was it was good. I liked it. Um, Bill Rogers, I have no notes on him because he was just there. <laughs> Admittedly. Um, he, he, he... He did get to shine during the flashback for Red Blood Cell, though, which I appreciate. Um, it was fun and delicious and hammy. Um, Joe, I only know Joe from one thing and one thing only, and thank you, Gigi, for bringing it up. I only know him from Fire Emblem Three Houses as fucking Claude. Claude. My boy, Claude. Claude's best boy. Claude is my boy. Claude is my favorite golden deer boy. Um, <laughs> and I, you, you better believe I fucking romanced the shit out of Claude when I played Golden Deer. Hell yeah. Um, I'm just gonna stand over here with Dr. Hardy and look at each other with visible question marks over our head. Get a fucking switch and get three houses and then you'll understand. Um, anyway. (laughs) But... This is not Claude. No, Claude, this no. is not. But I honestly appreciate it because it just was like all over the place. If I said like Ben Ben's performance was hammy, oh boy, Joe just took just took that moment and he's like, You want hammy? I'm gonna fucking give you hammy and he did. And I appreciate it so much. It was a lot of fun. But uh I think 
like Joe's one of the standouts in this section, but the other standout would be Koi Dao on this one. Um, <laughs> because Koi had, I think, more of a dynamicism with this character compared to all of the villains in the entire show. Mm-hmm. Um, he's not just this deliciously hammy villain. He <laughs> He just wants to survive. He just wants to live. That's it. And he's doing what he can to do that. So... Koi gets to play with with more emotion and more complexity compared to the other villains in the show. And Koi made me fucking believe for a hot minute that it was Johnny Young Bosch really? <laughs> in this role. Yeah, the tone of voice was similar to Johnny's. And I'm like, okay, I know this is Koi, but this sounds like Johnny Young Bosch to an extent. Hmm. It might be because I'm not, I don't get to talk about Koi Dao as an actor too often. No. Um, so I'm not used to his range. Though I do know that um, March Comes Like a Lion is a uh, really, he... really big one for him. Mm-hmm. He's lit up. He's red. He is, one, he right? is Ray yeah, yeah, Kiriyama. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. I haven't finished that show. And Andrews wants to murder me now that I said it again. Um, <laughs> but no, like. I think Koi has m- the biggest character arc out of all the villains in this show, and I appreciate that he got the chance to play with not only his range, but the emotion and complexity of this little cancer cell that just wants to live. But, um, yeah, overall, my favorites, I would say, in this section are Koi and Joe. Uh, but, in general, these characters are all enjoyable, even though sometimes obnoxious with uh, some of the... Um, <laughs> mixing and effects added to him. I will also say that. I will agree with Gigi a little bit on that one. Well, as uh, the uh, nurse practitioner here, uh, my opinion is that cancer uh, can screw itself because that whole episode was a giant devil's advocate for cancer. It was all, but cancer just wants to exist. It didn't do anything wrong. And then it even brings that point home by having a flashback to baby cancer cell where it's you know just two little kids who are like, why are they trying to hunt us? We didn't do anything wrong. We're just yep. existing just like everybody else. I'm like, screw that message. And that's, that's entirely I, I, on the I, Japanese I... side. But no, no, like, like okay, a show that's trying to be educational. Why would you go the extra miles to make one of the villains sympathetic? To be fair, it gave Koi Dao more to play with, though, with that. I, it did, and... It's very fitting that you got the March comes in like a lion guy to once again, uh, you know, sympathize that his lot in life is just screwed up and that why did like I can't even fail properly. I can't even be depressed right. That entire persona. I know that, that just that whole episode when I first saw it, just kind of like I'm not sure how I feel about the writing on this. Like it, it's like mm. there's a cancer advocacy group out there somewhere watching this and jerking off to it. But, to give credit, <laughs> Koi did a very good job in it. And, again, it maintains that reserve voice when in attack mode, and then it gets to be, like, super, uh, not condescending, but just like, um, you underestimated me, you fool, you're already dead kind of mentality. And that was fun to watch. It was kind of fun to watch the T-cells uh, kind of underestimate their chances of survival. And then have the whole body come in near the middle portion of that series to just wipe cancer off the face of the earth. So, yeah, a good, good little bit of episode there. Koi did a good job on that. As did Joe, uh, talking about Backless Sirius here, because that was uh, a villain that, because uh, at this point in the series, we're at like episode 11, so right before the climax, I didn't think that the show had any more variations on like the way to personify the villains anymore, because they'd already had you know, Ben and Christina, but, uh, Joe gives like this, um, and I don't mean this pejoratively, but did anyone else think that, uh, his persona was kind of queer coded? Very much so. Okay. I, I didn't want to be the only one. Um, and it, it, cause he's got, he's also got this very cocky persona of, um, you know, taking advantage of the body while it's in distress under heat stroke because, uh, and they they emphasize this that Baculus Sirius did not cause the heat stroke. Um, it's uh, it's a virus that's found in food and water, and you know leads to things like diarrhea and vomiting. But it's not the reason why the body is dehydrated in this episode. Um, and that entire dynamic again is kind of interesting. But a really knocks it out of the park with Joe's older yet like really campy persona that sounded different from all the other villains and. 
yeah, it's a, it's a shame that he died near the end, but then again, oh god, was it so satisfying to watch White Blood Cell just absolutely decimate him at the end there. Oh, it, it, admittedly it was. <laughs> yes. As was entertaining to watch uh, Pneumococcus get destroyed near the end, and uh, what I wrote on my note on this is that Ben gets to go full rat again on this character, just chewing on the cartoon scenery, and that's God exactly what it. he does. It's just, um... Radigan, that's what you're thinking Am of? I the no, only one who gets this reference? I, no, 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 no. Yes. I've seen Great Mouse Detective, thank you very much. <laughs> mm, so you see, White Blood Cell, there is nothing that you can do to stop me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I don't really see it. I do I now that it. you said it, and I like don't it I more. Don't. I don't, I can see twinges, but I don't, I'm like, this is not full Radigan, no way. Hey, hey, you cannot, you and, cannot be fucking, what is it, Tim Curry Radigan? Vincent Price. Vincent Price. Vincent Price, thank Price. you, wrong person. Wow. Okay. It's, okay. Been, it's been years since I've watched Great Mouse Detective, now I want to watch it. Maybe it's on Disney Plus. It know. is. Good, I want to watch oh, yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely, definitely go watch it, but um, anything, anything that even remotely uh, brings back the spirit of Vincent Price, even if he's not voiced by Maurice LaMarche, is absolutely welcome. And thank you so much, Ben Diskin, for hamming it up in there with uh, the digital warble that they added. Like Gigi was saying, it's like, that's kind of a cool effect that they added to make him even more man maniacally evil looking. And uh, props also to the design, because a lot of the villains seem like they're toku villain-based designs, where they're... Uh, like the kind of uh, evil Power Ranger monsters, uh, to contrast the the cells in the body who are supposed to be more like regular-looking people who like have different costumes. But no, no, Pneumococcus is just a fully deformed bacterial infection, and lots of fun to listen to. Now, Christina V, Gigi, you are right. She doesn't go like full uh, super villainous here. She does a completely different archetype. She does the Ojo Sama character archetype. You know, that kind of um, upperclassman, uh, snotty, rich girl persona. She even does the um, ha, 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 kind of voice where it like, holds the hand up to the mouth and gets her come up and near the end. And uh, that's, uh, I mean, it's a uh, kind of fitting because her design is supposed to have like this ball gown dress sort of look to it. And, uh, and we get to see that uh, come back in episode 10 to an even more extreme extent, and I, I just liked it. I, I liked it a lot. I like Christina having a lot of fun with being the bad guy. And Grapes. also... And what? Grapes. Yeah. Grapes. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Hit Grapes. Hey, why do we call it Staphylococcus? Because it looks like grapes. Yes. Courtesy looks of... Looks like a bunch of grapes. I mean... I I'm never going to forget that. Like, you said that it wasn't always educational or fun to listen to. I am always going to remember it, that Staphylococcus aureus is a grape-shaped bacteria who is voiced by Christina V. I, I fully expect <laughs> it to happen when I get diagnosed next time I go oh, to the tropics. Oh, or, Lord. Or how however else you get. How do you get that? You get... Okay, it was just a great operation to the skin. It's a... Toxic allergen to the skin. Awesome. Noah, Noah, Noah. <laughs> I, I wrote down too many notes not to... Okay, I won't go too far. I'll just finish this off by saying uh, Bill Rogers also did a really good job. Again, uh, none of the other char uh, the villains are like full-on uh, deformed monster looking with one eye. And uh, I'm glad that we you know, kind of drilled that point home by having Bill Rogers go full monsters trying to get little kids uh, persona. And... Everyone likes to play a villain. Like, every actor who's ever been in something enjoys playing the bad guy. And when you get to ham it up to sunny straight levels of persona, that's just, like, the best paycheck you ever collected. So I can't imagine that Bill Rogers has any regrets about playing up this character as hammy as he did. In fact, that's that's kind of the reason why... Uh, because you put together our cast list for us, and I think that's that's the reason why you picked the ones that you did, because... You have all these hammy performances just laughing it up and chewing the scenery and one-upping each other like these Saturday morning cartoon villains. And they're all fun to listen to. And then you have cancer. And then you've got cancer. <laughs> and then there's this guy. Yes. And then there, and there's this asshole. Yeah. Well, okay, yes, asshole, but I'm just going to call him this guy. Yeah. Well, I mean, no. it, it, he has reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Here's and, the well, thing. they've all got reason. It's. I have to agree with Noah on this. It is kind of a tone deaf subject that the show, or the manga in general, would make this character and try to put a sympathetic twist to it. Because 
every one of us has actually lost a friend or family to some form of cancer. Every one of us. Mm. And trying to say, hey, cancer is just trying to be its own thing. It's trying to exist. That's completely tone deaf. And I don't think that... I think that has more of an issue to do with the author author's original intent in the manga. Right. And then they just had to... They sort of had to adapt it for the anime. And so I don't blame the writers of this particular show. I just think... Oh, in the manga, Cancer keeps coming back. He's like the closest thing to an actual major antagonist in this manga. Okay. So they have to deal with him a few times. Um, that having been said... As far as the performance goes, I think Koi just absolutely does a phenomenal job. Because if it was any other thing, if if it was like X-Men and it, he was a mutant being persecuted, or, or if it had something to do with religion, you would actually feel sorry for this character. Right. And you would want him to win because he just wants to live. Um, mm-hmm. The fact that they had to give it to freaking cancer, of all things, is, is, the, is the one that... Uh, that's that's the um, that's the fly in the soup. That's a good but, uh, way to yeah. put it. Yeah, no, but, I think Koi did an excellent job with what he was given, and if nothing else, it made for a really exciting fight episode because Cancer is basically like Tetsuo from Akira. Um, absolutely. Yeah, it's a really great animation and really really great fight scene. So yeah. it's tone deaf, but but I mean there were good parts to come out of it. So. Anyways, I gotta admit that 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 fight scene. I'm sorry, that fight scene reminded me of um, obviously what Studio David is most known for. You know that bizarre adventure show that they made, Bento. Yeah, it reminded me of the fight scenes in Bento a whole lot, where they like really get dynamic and creative in how to have people fight against each other. Right, right. Anyways, uh, moving on to from the germs and viruses and bacteria to the actual first. Uh, good cells in our body. Yeah, you do. Yeah, we have mast cell, aka fat cell. Uh, we don't know why she's really called fat cell because she's not made of fat. Uh, but she. I mean, if you want, I could tell you. She monitors the antihistamines in the body, and uh, basically, she's the reason you have to take Benadryl every now and then. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Benadryl, ha <laughs> hi. <laughs> yeah. Allergies are a bitch. Right. You've got B cell. He's in charge of creating antibodies, and he's got his big super soaker that he sprays the uh, viruses with. And we have eosinophil, who she is a she is a T cell, but she's specifically made for fighting off parasites, and she's pretty worthless against literally anything else. So playing these, playing mast cell, we have Maureen Price. Playing B Cell, we have Eric Scott Kimmer, and playing Eosinophil, we have Kaylee Mills. Maureen Price, you've heard in shows such as Kakeguri Season Two and Sao Alicization. Eric Scott Kimmer, you've heard in Excel World and Moggy. Kaylee Mills, you've heard in March Comes in Like a Lion and Great Coons Undying Love, uh, Kudalu in Kimono Friends. I'm gonna start with I think I'm gonna start with Mast Cell. I'll start with Maureen. Um, because in all honesty, I don't really have a ton of notes about her. I don't have a lot of notes about any of these characters, to be honest with you. Mm. Um, but Maureen, (laughs) Maureen's just doing her best. She's just reading the manual, doing her best. (laughs) God damn it. Again, that whole, um, allergy episode, Christ almighty. Um, she... (laughs) She's very smart. She tries to she tries to be very level headed, calm, cool, and collected. And I think Maureen portrays that very, very well. Um, it's just straightforward, honestly. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> Eric Scott Kimmer. <laughs> um, the the tone of voice, while not a hundred percent, reminds me of uh, Speed of Sound Sonic and One Punch Man <laughs> a little bit. Not too much, because B Cell has a bit of energy. He's like very gung ho. He's like, "I got this, guys! I can do it!" And then sometimes 
there are instances where he's like, uh, you, I gotta go, uh, <laughs> I, I gotta create a new antibody. Uh, you guys can handle this, right? The, um, whole influenza thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Oh, that's a was, B, oh, that's an A type. Oh, well, I've only got B it's type. It's an A right type. Uh, you, yeah, guys I need to go, you guys got this. I'll be right back. <laughs> Get your but, um, back here. <laughs> I think my favorite thing about Eric and Marine's performances <laughs> is during the allergy episode where they have their argument with each other. Mm-hmm. That was a like a fun little dynamic that they had. Just like, bitch, you 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 unloaded so much antihistamines. Well, that's because you did so much fucking antibodies. I had to counteract that shit. Like, they're they're finding their dynamic was rather fun, and I did enjoy that. Um, Kaylee Mills. I'm surprised you actually did not bring up Alicization for Kaylee Mills on this one because the tone of voice and mo- the majority of the personality of Eosinophil reminds me of Alice from Alicization. 100%. I will argue against Nona that she is not, that she is a Sundare with a spear. She is not a Sundare. She's got pentails! Does not mean she's a Sundare. Personality wise, no. Personality wise, no. What would you classify it as then? If everyone has to be if has to be crammed into an anime archetype, who is you been a cell? Not a Sundare, I'll tell you that. That does that could be anyone. Look here, pigtails are not a prerequisite for Sundare, just look at fucking Taiga from Toradora. Anyways. She is such a how is she? Anyways. Not... Anyways. Shut up. Um <laughs> No, sorry, I'm just Yeah. Um Kaylee, I think, reminds me a lot of Alice. Very Alice from Alice's Asian. A bit quiet, more kind of mature sounding and everything like that. However, Isinophil is trying to also do her best. She wants to do her best even though she's not, her primary function is not to fight these bacterium. That's not what she's here for. But she does her best. Um, so she's So she's very sweet. She's very gentle and everything like that and I do enjoy that performance but um her dynamic also with um, white blood cell is also very amusing it's like a it's like a brother sister relationship between those two mm-hmm. um and I do like that dynamic a lot <laughs> fucking white blood cell he kills me though um but overall these three characters I don't really have much to say about them. They, they're there. They exist. <laughs> These performances are pretty good, though. I'd say. Uh, uh, Noah. I I'll almost say called your you... name. Your name's Hardy. <laughs> uh, yes. Go if you want. No. No. What you I'll say your name is Hardy. <laughs> okay. I, I guess I'll be Hardy then. All right. Um. <laughs> so Tifa, 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 Tifa. Goats, donkey pants. Donkey pants. <laughs> Aniplex sucks. Oh Homeless no. Red <laughs> it's funny considering this is an Aniplex show. <laughs> and finally, Cowboy Bebop. <coughs> anyway. anyway. So, yeah, this um, the reason why we chose this particular trio to uh, just kind of start with the good cells is because they're, they don't have as many uh, scenes or episodes, but they do have uh, dynamics with other characters in the cell, in, in the body, that make them stand out a little bit more. Like, we could have easily padded this cast out with at least 15 other side characters who show up, which we will not do because we love you people too much. Um, and in that uh, tradition, Maureen Price's mast cell is probably the more normal sounding out of all of them. Uh, she's not really given like uh, any vocal affectation that uh, fits her into a certain archetype, but uh, we do need that one uh, by-the-book kind of character, very literally very by-the-book, who can be both uh, lighter in her speech when she's just kind of following the rules and then get uh, reasonably agitated when... Um, Hey, I was just following the rules, okay? It's not my fault that all this histamine is, you know, clogging up your sinuses. And hey, here comes a tissue to blow all the snot out of your body. So she played up. She played this very well, and she played off of Eric really well, also. Uh, Eric Kimmer. Uh, Eric Scott Kimmer is a fun little shit who uh, really is also just doing his job. Like he's not trying to, like, one up anybody. He's just very full of himself. And that's exactly what the character called for. We're, we're going to run into a couple of cells that are also very full of themselves, but those guys um, at the ver- are uh, a little less likable because they're more muscle-bound. This guy is more of just uh, kind of like a happy-go-lucky shonen protagonist. So if you wanted an Ash 
from Pikachu, from Pokemon in your show, uh, that's what B-Cell is here for. And I appreciate that he sounds different enough from the other male cells in the body that uh, he could be differentiated even without looking at your screen. And I really want to give props to uh, Kaylee Mills' Eucinephil because that was an episode where I wasn't quite sure where they were going to go with this. Because I don't know, I didn't know going into this that Eucinephil is a white blood cell that is specifically meant to target parasites. Um, so when uh, she finally does get her, and we're going to pull a quote from TV Trops here, her crowning moment of awesome, uh, it's really satisfying to watch. And that dynamicism of being both uh, kind of shy, not shy, but like downtrodden during most of the show, and then flustered when everybody gives her compliments near the end that she's not prepared to receive, is really fun to watch and really cute to listen to. And I hope she shows back up for season two which means that there will probably be another parasite that attacks the body come season two. Oh my god, I'm going to agree with Noah about something. Oh boy! Oh my god! Whoa, Everybody whoa, whoa, pull whoa, your whoa, pants whoa. up. The world oh, is upside down. What? I know. What? Is, uh, it, is it, it must be the fucking apocalypse. I mean, it is 2020. Holy shit. It, it finally happened. Um, it finally happened. Oh my god. <laughs> Never I happened. wrote down two things about B Cell. Number one, he sounds like a bad anime shonen protagonist. <laughs> 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 Which is great because he was funny. Actually, three things about B Cell. Number two is that he didn't sound like any of the other boys, which was great because all the other boys wow. sounded exactly the fucking same. Yep. I can I can agree with that. Uh number three, he sounded like Vic Mignana. And I was very confused, and then I <laughs> I read the cast list and I was like, all right, so it's not Vic Mignogna. So that's what I thought about B-Cell. Uh, yeah, Shonen Protag 1000%. Um, I see it. Mass Cell, Marine Price. Um, the way that they were focusing on the black nylons that this character wears all the time, I thought this was going to go the sexy nurse route. And it didn't. No, was, no, no. What is, what is it you've said before about fucking girls in stockings? You said it on School Live. I can't remember what. Uh, oh. In the sheets? Oh, Undercover Slut. Undercover yeah, there Slut. You there undercover it is. I, I edited School Live. I was trying to remember. I'm like, <laughs> what was that? It was Undercover <laughs> Slut, right. I think. You're, I forgot yes. that Gigi said that. I forgot that I said that, too. Yikes. You're welcome. She probably is, too. Uh, well, she didn't sound like it. She sounded fine. Not a lot going on here. Um, it's fine. I, I'm, I'm not questioning directional choices, but I would have preferred the sexy doctor, sexy nurse route. It didn't happen. So it's fine. And then, uh, eosinophil, um, she sounded very young and Kaylee mm -hmm. Mills, correct me if I'm wrong. In Kakigurui, wasn't she the little gremlin girl? I don't know. Who's I have like, to look that who's uh, like, you don't have You're to look it up, but... I mean, I already got A&N pulled up. Let me right. check really quickly. Right? I think she was the little girl who wears the bunny suit all the time. Probably. Uh, if it, uh, if me... that's true, that's exactly what I thought of. And I was like, wow, she sounds so young and inexperienced. And then I'm like, but it's the na 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 Phil. Yeah, because I can't pronounce it. Um, is young and inexperienced. Words. What are words? There's so not going to be a quiz at the end of this. So or it really works. I'll kill you. No, I oh, don't care. please, no it. quiz. I will end your life. Um, so now, yeah. First quiz. What makes red blood cells red? Stop it. Yeah, I thought it worked. The it sounded very young and like inexperienced, it. and I hope that was so on purpose because it was a good, it was a good acting choice. <laughs> I thought for that one, I liked it. And no, she's now not you're... a Sundere. Oh, come on. Thank you. Look, Sundere is a personality type, not because she has pigtails. Yes. But she fit the personality type. No, no, she doesn't. There's no she romance doesn't. in this show. As much as you want to ship the white you and the red blood cells together, <laughs> they're not going to happen. Me, I who ships everyone. I no. want my pink blood cell. That's all I want. But she's not Sundere. Sorry, Noah. That, that's all I have to say. Fine, you in the comment section, back me up on this. Or don't. Whatever makes you happier. I'm about to say, I think the comment section will agree that she's not a Sundere. Right. Just saying. Hardy, back me up. Is she a Sundere? No comment. Damn it! I'll tell you, I'll tell you what she is, though. She's the story of Ru Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. You know? Oh, yeah. I like her That actually now. is a good, that's actually a good, like, 
connection. I, I can see it, yeah. Yeah. Because she has one purpose, and when she finally pulls that purpose off, everyone finally sees her for who she truly is. That is oh my god, that's a sweet comparison. Oh my god. Yeah. And one parasite Eve body came to say, <laughs> Haley, with your spear of death, won't you kill the parasite? <laughs> <laughs> this giant barracuda-looking like so thing that some <laughs> That's true. That's what it was. But what was that exact thing? It was. It was food poisoning. I think it was. Food yeah. Poisoning. It was. It was food poisoning. Yeah. Yes. I think the body ate some bad sushi. Yeah, because they mentioned it was a parasite that's found on like raw fish. Yep. Um. So they must have had bad sushi. Side note: Kaylee Mills does play the bunny girl in Kaki hey. Nice. Okay. Anyways, I'll be really quick. Um. Mast Cell and B Cell, they really only have their couple moments, so they didn't really stand out to me, but they were fun, uh, especially their argument. But yeah, I really do like uh, Kaylee's episode where that she gets, where she gets to be basically root the the uh, T Cell equivalent of Rudolph. So we're gonna watch yeah. this every Christmas now. God, just watch that specific episode. Yes, yeah, cells. She just, need, are, she just cell- needs to have a little light up nose. That's it. Cells at Work is now officially a Christmas anime. Pass it on. <laughs> you watch it right. You watch it right, right after Die Hard every year. Oh, damn it! I'm out. The new Christmas tradition: Die Hard and fucking Cells at Work. It's, no. Di- it's Die Hard, Iron Man three, and Cells at Work episode four. Wait, I, I, Iron Man three is not a Christmas movie. Heck yeah, it is. I haven't seen Iron Man 3, but I, as far as I know, not. it's not a Christmas movie. I haven't seen this, but okay. <laughs> so my, why are you... Oh my god, no. No, 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 <laughs> I'm mocking you. I'm like, well, I haven't seen it, but I already know it's not a Christmas show. Shut up! I mean, after all, Death Parade is a sports anime. Damn straight. I will die on that hill. <laughs> you still <laughs> got that t-shirt, that. Hardy? And I Free is shirt. not a sports do. anime. I will die on that hill too. Free is free is fucking high school drama, like with abs. Yes, that you can bounce a quarter off of. <laughs> anyway. Speaking sp- speaking of abs, our next set of cells certainly are packing a <laughs> great pair of them. In all oh, three yes. cases, ah oh, yes, we have the T cells. Now these are a type of red blo- uh, white blood cell. That uh, I think they come after the macrophages have set in, because yes, I, I yeah, think so. The regular white blood cells are first on the scene, then the macrophages, then the T cells come to to uh, clean house of everything else. And or so, I guess the show yeah. also sometimes has the T cells coming in before macrophages. Sometimes I don't know. It's kind of explained that yeah, the, traditionally T cells come after everybody else has done the heavy lifting. Right. And fun and fun fact. I'm sorry. Fun fact from uh, from my wife. Who, uh, when I told her that there were T cells in the show, she said, uh, "If you have low T cells, you might have AIDS." So apparently, uh, that's also related into your immune system and preventing HIV. Oh, that's interesting. Because, okay. Because HIV um, actually attacks your white blood cells. That's what it goes yes. for. It does. So. Okay. Yeah. So. That's Anyways, the T cells are a kind of white blood cell. They and there's three different types that we're going to be talking about in this collective. We have your basic killer T cell, uh, who is a total Chad. He's a drill instructor. No, he's not a Chad. I will die on that hill. He's not a Chad. He's a himbo. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's naive T cell. <laughs> yeah. I honestly, he's just kind of a jerk. He's 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 a drill sergeant. That's that's uh, that's why I classify him as. Mm-hmm. He's an yeah. asshole, but not a Chad. I don't think yeah. he's a Chad. What's he's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> he's mean, but he's doing it for good reason. Yes. And then we have Helper T-Cell, who basically uh, runs the operations of the other T-Cells and basically helps from behind the scenes. He also has a long-standing rivalry with regular T-Cell. He also has back. some bitchin' glasses. Oh, yes. And finally, we have my favorite character in the entire show, <laughs> who I have affectionately referred to, called, uh, named, uh, nicknamed, North Korea cell. <laughs> or rather, a uh, natural NK, natural killer cell. Can I uh, ask the question of why you refer to her as North Korea cell? Because I don't think I've actually heard the reason. The reason is simple because she's referred to as NK cell, and I just, mm-hmm. it just kind of came natural. I'm like, NK, <laughs> North Korea, okay. 
okay, that's a weird way to go about it, but all right. But well, when you, I mean, when she you, is willing to kill you on the in, on the uh, drop of a hat. So I mean, it's true, she does. But we would like to apologize to all of our North Korean listeners. Which are probably non-existent. non-existent. All non-existent. <laughs> there's gonna be one. I know there's gonna be just one listening to this. Like motherfucker. <laughs> It'll probably be Kim himself. <laughs> probably. Oh no, <laughs> sir! You're Fuck, supposed to be tr- monitoring the country. Well, there's we're in trouble term. now. It was nice knowing everybody. I can't run the country. I have to listen to jackass nerds talk about <laughs> anime on internet. God. This is going to a dark place. (laughs) This is going to a bad place. Can we please not talk about North Korea anymore? Okay. Before our asses get into trouble, please. Okay. Christ. We here at Dub Talk do not engage in politics, just uh, for an FYI. Yes. Unless we're talking about uh, a French anime, and then it's all for it. But (laughs) Anyways, voicing the three uh, T-cells, voicing Killer T-cell, we have Robbie Damon. Voicing Helper T-Cell, we have Ray Chase. Voicing Natural Killer Cell, we have Morgan Berry. Uh, Robbie Damon, you've heard him in shows such as A Silent Voice and as Tuxedo Mask in Sailor Moon. Ray Chase, you've heard in uh, Be the Beginning and uh, Carol in Tuesday. Uh, and Morgan Berry, you've heard in shows such as Riddle Story of Devil and Love. I'm so glad you mentioned uh, Tuxedo Mask, because I'm just imagining the, the meme, my work here is done, but, <laughs> but you, you didn't, didn't do anything. do anything. <laughs> yup. Yup. That is so killer T-cell. Yup. All right. So who hasn't gone? Hardy you? hasn't gone first. Dr. You? Hardy, we cannot operate. Nurses can only give nurses Please advise, diagnosis. Dr. Hardy. Please advise. Well, for my expert opinion, uh, I love Robbie Damon's performance in this because... He is such a versatile range, but he never really gets to show it off. Mm. He usually is cast as sort of your typical teenage protagonist type. Um, mm-hmm. But here he's just a total a total beef. Yeah. And it, and we have to remember, this is the man who now voices Kenshiro. Wait, what? Yes. I did not know that. Yeah, he was the voice of Kenshiro in the, uh, the Fist of the North Star games that's based on the Yakuza engine. Oh, really? I didn't okay. know that. Yeah. I was going to ask, was there a new Fist of the North Star anime that came out recently? No, yet? the only one I remember is that weird chibi spin-off looking thing from like, what, five years ago? That was a while ago. That was a while ago, but still. I mean, tw- 2020 is already 15 years long, so even longer than Look here, at least in 2020, the Fist of the North Star manga got licensed. It so... is. And that, again, one of, one of the few great things we can say about this year. You are already <laughs> red. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Um, yes. Anyways, yeah, it's because I kind of want to hear Robbie play these big bruiser type of roles because he is kind of a big dude in real life if you've ever really seen him. Um, he's not that big of a dude. He's. Have you seen his arms? Yes, like, yes, arms, I have yes, seen I his agree arms. With that. But otherwise than that, he's not that that big of a dude. I think he's pretty it, ripped, it, yeah. It, it, Compared to even... Ray Chase, he's a little bit of a bigger dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, r- r- because I've met I've met both of them in the same fucking room. But anyways, yeah, I like Robbie a lot. I like how he plays off both of uh, Helper T and uh, NK. Uh, they have their squabbles between. He has his squabbles between both of them actually, um, mm-hmm. and because it's sort of like uh, like this um, like sort of this you know this brotherly sort of competition between him and Helper. That they're sort of going back and forth, and, and a helper actually helps him become what he is. Because helper was the, the more advanced of the students while they were in school. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and it's kind of interesting to see their dynamic evolve over the episode. And so they have this sort of like friendship, and then they also have this sort of ongoing rivalry. And I like mm-hmm. how both Robbie and Ray bounce off each other. Uh, Ray Chase, we've heard him in, We've heard his voice range go all over the place. The man's a wizard. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But uh, I like how he sort of has this more sort of... We get to hear his, like, actual tone here. That he's just... Yeah. He's, he sort of plays this guy with a st- stick up his butt. And he tells the, <laughs> tells everyone what to do and how to do it. And the, the, Correction. The, he had a stick up his butt while he was training. Nowadays, he's more relaxed. Yes. He just wants to drink <laughs> his tea. 
And he just wants to drink his tea and not get pummeled by another yes. goddamn naive tea like, cell, because fucking killer tea cell's an idiot. Yeah, because Robbie no. just said, like, sorry I flicked that booger too hard. Yep. <laughs> did, did he get pummeled because someone got thrown through a window in one of the yes. episodes? Yes, mm-hmm. yes. That's, that's what led into the flashback between, like, killer tea and the helper tea. Yeah, but I think they both did really good. Oh... <sighs> I think I'm in love with a part of my body now. <laughs> I didn't think it would She's, ever be possible. That natural killer cell's gonna fucking kick your ass, Hardy. Is, is this gonna be one of those grape coon situations where we need to get you a, pa- a no! cardboard cutout to, you know, no! help <laughs> Look, I'll because fight I, him for that cutout, so... Because I really oh, want... Oh, shit, alright. I, I really want NK to step on me. <laughs> yeah! No, no, I don't want to be stepped on. I want to be bench pressed. Ooh, ooh, there's another. <laughs> All right. Yeah. No, I. Did anyone else kind of get like sort of a um, sort of like this almost a sexual tension between her and Killer T, like they were fighting oh, each other? Oh, they are so no, fucking. I, 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 so... I, I, I didn't actually. That is. That's gonna be some. Stuff. I just got more of like a competitive vibe off of it, honestly. That's going to be some cellular reproduction right there. Uh, <laughs> what happens when two Shit. T-cells get it up? They become Let's double not T. not find out. Oh, god damn yeah. it. But I just, I love Morgan Berry at this. I mean, she just has this husk to her voice that makes her sound so incredibly sexy, and I just... <laughs> <laughs> I never knew my wife who could be a cell. Oh a single god. cell. I better oh, go. Shit. I better pass it on to someone's. Um, oh, uh, let's shit. see. Noah, please take this out of my hands. You really want to. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> take the wheel! <laughs> take it from my hands! hands. <laughs> you really want to keep this, this horny train going. <laughs> Alright, let's pick it up and keep heading on. Because. Now, I, I didn't exactly have the hots for Natural Killer Cell exactly, but. But. She is. She's definitely on the sultrier side. Like Gigi was saying before that uh, she was expecting like sexy nurse voice uh, out of one of the prior characters. Uh, this isn't sexy nurse voice. This is uh, badass senpai. Please bench press me voice, and I am all here for it. <laughs> but it's not just the. Vo- it's not just the voice she puts on. Of all the characters in the show, she is the one that is given the most quips, the most uh, liberal translations from the original, and mm. I am also all here for that. This is the character that uh, Lilac was talking about with uh, uses terms like butt munch and calls yep. characters blondie and all sorts of little one-liners here and there that really plays up the character's appeal, I think. And I have no idea why the staff was horny for this one particular cell, but thank God for that because <laughs> I'm going to remember this cell. <laughs> Even after we stop recording, I'm going to remember. And I'm trying try to remember, what was like the... I don't know if I had, like a really good... Uh, I don't know if I had, like, one line in particular that she said that was, like, really good or really over the top. But, yeah, she really needed to uh, play up uh, the cockiness because leading into the Cancer Cell episode, that was what uh, they kind of had going against them was that they underestimated their opponent. And, oh, mm-hmm. God, did Natural Killer Cell underestimate their opponent. So, yeah, Morgan Berry. Uh, I don't really have, like, a voice in my head when I think of, like, Morgan Barry, like I do with some voice actresses, but it's probably going to be this voice going forward. So next time we talk about Morgan Barry, I'm just going to think, mmm, step on me, natural killer cell. <laughs> Fucking hell. Uh, I'll, ke- I'll keep it less horny with the other two. But I won't drop the, the theory that killer T-cell is a Chad. I'm sorry, but Robbie Damon does a great I, job. I, I a, don't wh- see it. Give me your definition of what differentiates this guy from a Chad. And I, okay, you said he's doing this is what a he's drill, doing. This this is a drill a, sergeant to me, not a Chad. Okay, but drill sergeants aren't cute. Usually, that is but, not. A, oh my sweet God! It's been a while since since I've seen Full Metal Jacket, but I don't remember drill sergeants being cute. Okay, so and this character was obviously designed to be cute. With, you know, the python arms and the tussled blonde hair and the sympathetic backstory where he was more of a wimp. Not not a wimp, but was just weaker and had to learn to open his eyes or else he was going to get killed by the bacteria. Like, that that was a fun episode. And I'm sorry, I didn't write down who the voice actress was who plays young uh, killer... Oh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, young killer T-cell. But that was also well-performed. And Robbie, again, was playing up this character that 
for some reason, is personified as, uh, thinks they're tougher than they are, because they come in when all the fighting's already been done, but it was a fun voice to listen to, like, extra gravel into it, and we also get to hear some nervousness as well. We get to hear nervousness and being proud when uh, one of the characters, Naive Cell, becomes, what was the proper term for that? It was like, Exterminator Cell. I thought it was a Vector Cell. Th- thank you, it was, it was X Vector Cell. You know, he goes from, I can see, I can fight, in that see, one episode. See, a Vector Cell is the one I can see as the Chad, not Killer T. No, I, I, that's a himbo. A, a, a Vector Cell respects women. This guy <clears throat> does not. Is all I gotta say. And I don't have as many things to say about Ray Chase, because like Hardy was saying, this is much closer to uh, what I feel like is Ray's more natural speaking voice. Just, you know, put him down at a bar with a bowl of pretzels and talk to him, and this is probably what he would sound like. But it's fitting for the character, because he's got to be authoritative while also approachable. Like, you're not intimidated mm-hmm. by Helper T-Cell, but you respect the uh, command that they have over keeping things in order. So that was done well done on Ray Chase. So no criticism on this one. I'm going to join Hardy in the horny for cells camp, if you don't mind. God damn it. Move over. Yes, we have wine and Cheez-Its. <laughs> Is it right. red wine? Only the oh. reddest. Christ. All right. So you seem vocal over there, Stephanie. Why don't you go next? Um... I'm the odd one out. I don't sense sexual tension between NK and fucking Killer T. Like, I don't. I sense competitiveness. Like, childish competitiveness. That's what I get from their dynamic and their relationship, but, you know, whatever. Uh, in terms of Morgan Berry, though, I done fucked up early on. Uh, so you know the other Killer T... The, the other T cell that's usually seen with fucking um, the regulatory T cell, regulatory the Thank blonde you. girl. Yes, mm-hmm. I th- was dumb. I thought that was Morgan at first. Okay. <laughs> and then I realized I was, when we got to an NK cell, I was like, oh no, oh. this is Morgan. <laughs> and then I realized the regulatory was Erica Mendez, who and was then, also and fun. And you um, realize at that moment why Hardy was so insistent on putting her in the cast list. <laughs> I I mean, I I didn't know wh- who which one was fucking North Korea cell until like twenty minutes ago. So no, actually, I didn't understand until that was fucking explained to me. We, we apologize. Um, <laughs> but um, for her performance, Morgan is just this fucking badass. Like. <laughs> NK cell reminds me of like a GI Jane kind of character. Like, 100% badass, she will, like, destroy you. Um, but she's also not an idiot either, because, again, she notices what the fuck Cancer Cell is up to before anybody else. And tries to, like, get him away from Killer T and White Blood Cell um, before any problems or troubles happen. Um, but no, she's a fucking badass, and I do like some of her dialogue of, like... But Munch and Blondie, and her dynamic with Robbie is fucking fantastic as well. To which I will transition this into Robbie. Robbie is a fucking drill sergeant. You, <laughs> you can't tell me otherwise. Like, it doesn't, it, it comes off as like big and brutish at first, but then like, you realize when you get to like naive cell and fucking the f- flashback right before the flashback with all the T cells mm-hmm. and he's, just, like, instructing these new naive cells, like, okay, he's going 100% drill sergeant. That is what Robbie's doing. And I honestly really like and I appreciate it, because you are so used to Robbie being, like, softer and not this, like, aggressive <laughs> tone. You're not used to that at all. I'm used to a silent voice here, right, right? I'm used to those kinds of tones. So I appreciate and I love this very, very much. And then... His dynamic is also fantastic with Ray Chase as well, which, transitioning to Ray Chase, (laughs) Ray Chase is a goddamn wizard sometimes. Like, it's not even funny. But this is among one of his his more softer performances. I'm very much more used to things like fucking 
fairy tale dragon cry. I'm used to fucking Irmacoon, to which his character in Irmacoon, that's your fucking Chad, all right? I call him Ray Chad because of that horse shit. <laughs> um, and then, because I'm still watching it, it's almost done on Toonami at the time of recording, is Bruno Bucciarati from JoJo's Bizarre Avenger Golden Wind, to which Bruno is fucking best, best character, not even gonna lie. Um, I love Bruno so much. Um, but this is a very softer spoken Ray Chase voice. It's similar to, um, shit. I want to say it's Yukiyasu is the name from Anohana. Um, no, we'll know what I'm talking Jintan. about. Oh, no, 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 he's no, not Jintan. Jintan. That's Griffin Burns. You're right, you're right. Um, Yukiyasu, I think, is Ray, right? I think that's the name of the character. God, I, I, I hated the, the, him the so cross much. Dressing, I, the cross-dressing I moron. Know, I hated him. You know who. I don't remember his You name. hate that character. It's similar in tone to that character, yeah. except Helper T is a lot even softer than that. Um, though the flashbacks more go in line with... Um, his character on Anohana in terms of, like, personality, which makes sense. But no, I really enjoy Ray. This is probably the softest I've ever heard him go, because I'm so used to these, like, lower-pitched, fucking aggressive, like, badass kinds of tones that I'm, for Ray that I'm used to. Um, this is just very different. But all three of these characters have fun dynamics, and they're, <laughs> Jesus Christ. These, just, these guys just want to, like, kick each other's asses. It's kind of hilarious to me. To which, side note, I'm going to bring this up for just a minor second. Fucking Griffin Burns as, um, the goddamn, um, he's the wearing the green suit. He brings up the photo albums Dendritic. all the goddamn time. Yeah, dendritic cell. Yes, he's cute and adorable. And he just embarrasses the shit out of the T cell. That's fucking great. I love that. Um, it, it's, again, yeah, it's funny. Yeah, I wish he'd shown up more. Win. I wish he'd shown up more, too. He was so cute. I liked him. Yeah. But I'm, I'm good. <laughs> well, I'm calmed down now, so I guess I'll talk about the boys first, since that's what everybody expects of me. And I'm I on mean, brand. Look here. You, go, you, gotta save, uh, you gotta save your best girl for last out of this group, right? So and, and We've gotta be on brand here, okay? We, we have expectations and sponsors that we, we gotta cater to. So, I, yeah. Look I'm here. Always... Gigi also, Gigi's also a fan of Morgan Barry, so that is also on brand for her so on brand let's talk about ray chase um he has a good glasses voice if y'all don't know what my glasses voice means uh listen to the show for actor songs connection mm. where i go into detail explaining the nuances of glasses voice yes. um <laughs> this character is really odd um he's kind of pretentious like the voice is kind of pretentious and then it gets like spazzed out all the time it's really weird like this character is odd I don't know how I feel about him. Ray did a good job, though. Good glasses voice. Uh, Robbie Demon. I was not expecting that voice to come out of that mouth. I was expecting a lower-pitched voice, and that was not what I got. Um, were, you, were you expecting more like a... Uh, uh, God, I'm blanking on name. Um, oh, God, why am I blanking on name? I'm sorry, I was thinking of, like, a uh, really low voice. Uh, who plays Garter Belt in Penny and Stocking? That's Sabbath. Cause Sabbath, thank you. I was gonna yes. say Wake Camp. I'm like, no, that's the wrong. You well, either one, either one will work. Either one will work. I didn't get it. That's fine. It was. He has a nice drill sergeant voice. Again, I'm used to Robbie Damon playing Tuxedo Mask. So forever I to mean, me, he will be Tuxedo Mask. But this is interesting. Say, like, like this, Robbie's it, more like soft, softer characters nine times out of ten. This is different. Yeah, I just I wasn't expecting this. No. I don't know I mean, if I would have liked somebody else better, but I mean, it was good I, for what it was. But I have to imagine that their intention was that they didn't want you to uh, be put off by this character. He didn't want to be seen as, like, too manly, so that's why they got a uh, more higher-pitched voice to play off the boyish aspect of it. No, yeah. Noah, there's never a thing as too manly. This yeah, is really? True. Really? It's true. It's true. It's true. So, like, Schwarzenegger... Seagal, manly, like that's not too manly for you? No. Nah. Oh, okay. Right. But there's no such thing as too manly, dude. Okay, so I, I'm sorry. I, will, I, I will agree with Gigi on that one. I, di I didn't peg you for like a, a Conan macho caveman kind of. I mean, fan. it's not my. It, personally, it's not my type, but. It's not like, my type either. But <laughs> still, point still stands. <laughs> Look, all, all, variety all the is the spice builders. of life. That is true. That is mm -hmm. absolutely true. Hi, boyfriend. I love so much. 
<laughs> who doesn't look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Hi, Gigi's boyfriend, who we all love so much. <laughs> who's, way, who's more manly than any of the cells. I'll just put it like that. <laughs> um, let's talk about Morgan Berry, who's my wife. Not really. <laughs> but I love her. Um, Again, on brand. <laughs> yeah, on brand. Uh, the moment this NK cell opened her mouth, I was like, holy shit, that's Morgan Berry. And she became <laughs> the best character in the entire anime. Ever- She's uh, the best. The best girl. Um, honestly, to me, this sounds like a typical Morgan Berry performance, but maybe it's mm-hmm. because I listen to Morgan Berry like, all the time. Um, she's in an yeah. Otome game where I literally oh, listened boy. to her talk for two hours a route, and there were a shit ton of routes. So I could pick her out of a fucking cookie jar and be like, oh, that's Morgan Berry. It was perfect. She was like totally like on Morgan Berry brand. I loved it. Best girl. I'm fighting you all for that cardboard cutout. Oh, God. (laughs) Please do not make me the referee. I do not want to be involved in this fight. Look, I'm sneaky. I'll just get it. It's fine. All right. Moving on to our next set of cells. We have a bunch of female cells. Well, or at least in this show, they're portrayed as female. Uh, we have Macrophage, who is a type of white blood cell. She is portrayed as a maid with one of those giant knives from Higurashi. <laughs> she's she's Rena. She's Rena. Yeah. Rena, Rena. We have we have Senpai Red Blood Cell, who was the um, sort of the big sister like character to uh, a regular normal red blood cell that we were talking there's about. There's nothing normal. Main re- I'm sorry, there's nothing normal about main character red blood cell. Uh, no, that's literally... In, in fact, I'll get into that later. Uh, we have Kohai red blood cell, who was her junior, uh, who trained under regular red blood cell. And then we have the platelets, or we have the main platelet, uh, who are portrayed as children in this show, sort of they're kindergarten. So- Precious little babies. Yes. The most powerful cells in the bloodstream, actually. Alright. Playing Senpai Red Blood Cell, we have... Well, playing Macrophage, we have Laura Post. Playing Senpai Red Blood Cell, we have Kira Buckland. Playing Kohai Red Blood Cell, we have Jeannie Tirado. And playing pl- the platelet, or at least the head platelet, we have Xanthi Huen. Laura Post, you've heard in shows such as Love Live School Idol Festival and The Promised Neverland... Uh, uh, Kira Buckland, you've heard in shows such as Excel World and Kakegurui. Uh, Kohai, you've heard, Jeannie Toronto, you've heard in shows such as Carol and Tuesday and Kiss Him, Not Me. And Xanthi Wen, you've heard in shows such as Anohana <laughs> and the redub of Ico Incarnation. I'm not ready yet. Fuck. <laughs> yes. My heart. Well, if you're not ready, if you're not re- if you're not ready, hit then Stephanie, you go ahead. <laughs> My heart, Noah, you bastard. <laughs> Look what you made me do. Um, Post a picture out of context that appears normal for anyone else, but for you, brings absolute trauma. <sighs> Shit. Um, I'll start... I'm going to start with Jeannie on this one, because she really only pops in the last couple of episodes, really. Um, I like Jeannie. I, I like Jeannie. She was... She was a, she comes off as a bit mature, um, intelligent, knows her stuff, and, I mean, compared to our main Red Blood Cell character that we follow throughout the course of the show, um, it's an interesting dynamic because goddamn Red Blood Cell does not know where the fuck she goes half the time. <laughs> she gets lost very easily. Um, but I think the highlight for Jeannie's performance is during the last episode where she and our main red blood cell are trying to traverse the a fucking blizzard with uh, the boxes of oxygen, and she's just like, "We can't do anything. It's all over." Like, I think that was a fun highlight for her. Otherwise, in that, um, very mature, uh, very intelligent, just trying to do her best. Um, let's see. Kira Buckland as the senpai red blood cell. Uh, <laughs> the big sister. Um, big sister is probably an apt way of describing this, the personality of this character, and I think it works very, very well for Kira. She Again, she also has a fun dynamic with our main red blood cell. 
uh, that being like, what? Why are you getting lost? What are you doing? <laughs> um, and it's such a joy. Uh, I don't usually hear Kira in mature roles like that this. Usually it's like little girl type of characters. I think the closest to the Senpai Red Blood Cell is um, maybe her character in Blood Lad. That might be the closest in terms of tone to me. Um, but otherwise than that, she was fun and a little joy to mess with the main Red Blood Cell. Um, Laura Post's Macrophage. She's... <laughs> I'm used to Laura Post not being a soft-spoken character. I'm not used to that. And Macrophage is very soft, very maternal, um, borderlines yandere, except she's not fucking crazy. She just wants to kill things. <laughs> With just a nice little smile on her face. A lot of the, like, her and fucking White Blood Cell, I think, are very similar in that regard. Where they basically could kill something and with a smile on their face. Except White Blood Cell, just he doesn't smile. He's a different character. He's a different thing all on his own. Um, uh, on no, a really biological level, Macrophage in your body like eats bacteria. Like, flat out devours it. Mm -hmm. So every time, she's, she's probably just like, Ah, oh, yes, dinner is here. And that also explains <laughs> the, um, the nice bruise of fucking... Bacteria that they keep making. Uh, <laughs> um, no, but this is definitely a more softer Laura Post voice, and I really enjoy it. It's very sweet. Very sweet and gentle. And considering the microphages do also care for and raise the red blood cells, the white blood cells, all this fun stuff in the bone marrow... Um, kind of like a maternal figure. This is Isabella. This is not <laughs> yeah, Isabella was... from Promised Neverland. This is not, but same idea <laughs> at least. Um, and I really did enjoy Xanthi Huynh as little little main play. Pl fuck, I can't say words. Pleiates. Platelet. Platelet. Thank you. I can't say things today. Oh, as main no. as main the little platelet, she cute, she adorable. <laughs> I want to give her hugs. <laughs> I want to give her hugs and snuggles and just uh. <laughs> she's so and tea and and tea some barley tea. Um, no, Xanthi is just so cute and adorable. She leads the other little platelets very well. It's like we can do it. And, no, everybody have their coagulation devices. Yes. <laughs> Like, she has a lot of fun little moments, and it's just so precious. The one thing, main thing I knew about Cells at Work long before I watched the show is that everybody loves this character in particular. Yeah. I understand why <laughs> now. Um, but no, Xanthi was precious and adorable, and I want to protect, must protect, <laughs> must protect with my life. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say at this point. Uh, Gigi, what do you think? Platelet is very cute. I just want to squish her. Yes. I love her. I want to snuggle. No. no I want to snuggle. She's so cute. Um, seriously, I have a, I have an issue of finding voice actresses who can and cannot play little girl voices, and, um, this is mm. one of the best ones I've heard. So nice. I was impressed. Little baby Platelet. Love her. Um, do 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 Kara Buckland, she has a really nice speaking voice. Like, I don't know what it is, but I was just kind of drawn to this character. Um, she's very big sisterly, obviously. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. It just was very nice. Like, I could listen to her in more things. I think the only other thing I've ever heard her in was Kaki Garui. And she didn't sound uh, like okay. this. <laughs> so No. <laughs> no, she, she was uh, nails above everybody else in that yeah, show. Yeah, tell me about it. Except she didn't play that girl. She played the other one. Oh, you're, I'm sorry, you're right. She played the other one who ripped her fingernails but, out. There, there was a lot of body horror in that But show. nice try on the pun. I appreciated it. Um, it, it <laughs> really nice speaking voice. I liked her. Um, macrophage. Uh, in, all, in all theory, I should like this character a lot. And I did. Um, Laura Post plays her very high. Like, very high. Um, 
Yeah. And very mm-hmm. breathy, which yes. I, I kind of liked it. Um, she has this little joyful laugh when she's killing things that's not maniacal, which I kind of found refreshing. Like, she didn't go full out yandere. She's just like, this is my job. <laughs> I love my job. Um, and, like, I felt, like, kind of relaxed listening <laughs> to macrophage which is also kind of disturbing because she's sitting there and she's like slicing things to pieces so i don't know macrophage is pretty cool though she gets a cool weapon i i enjoyed macrophage and i liked laura's performance here um as for the kohai cell uh to be real i skimmed through the second or the last episode of the series because by this point i was tired and i didn't care um so in the first episode Jeannie Tirado was in, um, it sounded kind of wooden, but the character was kind of wooden. Um, mm-hmm. She was very down to business. You guys know I love Jeannie Tirado. She has a great tone to her voice, too. Um, in the second episode, it gets like a lot more out there, and she's like yelling and stuff. And I was like, that's good, too. I kind of prefer her like when the character was wooden like I, I to be fair though i also didn't really watch most of the last episode except for the fact that they made all the red blood cells at the end have southern accents Yay. look they're wearing fucking winter coats why not give them canadian accents i'm gonna put ah. those again here so tell me gg pray tell What does a Canadian sound like? Well, if you want to be as stereotypical as the southern accents that were in the last episode, they would say things like A and a boot and talk about Mounties. (laughs) They love their poutine. It would have been like you can make (laughs) you can make a very stereotypical (laughs) Canadian accent like you made a very stereotypical southern accent for the fucking 17 million transfusion. transfusion cells. The transfusion, yep. Which I was just like, come yep. on, really? This co- They're not even wearing the right clothes. <laughs> They're wearing winter coats. I mean, get a cold, please. I, 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 I get the point with the trans... I get the, I get the understanding what they're going for for the transfusion cells, but I'm also just like, why? How about Russian? How about... <laughs> what else is cold? Antarctic accents. Pray tell, Gigi. What does a Russian accent mean? Not Jerry Jewel. We get sucked through metal. We get sucked (laughs) through metal tube of pain. Like yes. We spin round and be. I'm guessing you'll spin me right round, baby, right round. Yes. (laughs) I'm guessing. Yes, we are blood. (laughs) Yes, our we are blood, but we have high alcohol level. (laughs) You'll spin my head right round, right round when you go down, when you go down, down. I'm Fuck. guessing that the Japanese we, we had Kansai dialect, which is <laughs> default southern accent when you put it into yep. English. So clearly the blood downer is from Kansai. In <laughs> clearly. Red, in the red blood cell, Hatelet sticks you. I hate Jesus. everything about my life right now. <laughs> I have made we this col- hole. It is just for me. <laughs> we collect blood sample from moose and squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Oh, yeah, it was Rocky and Bullwinkle, that shit. Oh, it's funny, because Ben Diskin. <laughs> oh, wow, you brought that, like, full full circle. That was, like, three Hell circles. Hell yeah, I did. I'm impressed. Hell yeah, I did. And I haven't even seen the new Rocky and Bullwinkle, and I want to, because that is my shit. <laughs> I love Rocky and Bullwinkle as a kid. Anyways, um, Noah, are you ready yet? <laughs> Getting off the accent here, because I, I think I already caused enough trouble with the North Korean accent. I don't want to dig our hole any further. Please, please, no. I'm going to agree with Gigi about Jeannie Tirado in that uh, it was a little bit wooden, um, but also because the character was kind of meant to be that way. Uh, she was very uh, you know, fresh out of school, as it were, and uh, as opposed to regular wh- red blood cells, she knows everything. Like She knows all seven functions of the red blood cells, which are, of course... To retain moisture, exchange gases, transmit nutrients, regulate temperature, protect the body, repair wounds. Stop. Okay. So, 
the <laughs> point is that um, she, it fit with the character. Um, I actually want to talk more about the script on this one, because those of you who had seen the show and had only watched it in dub may be asking, why do you keep calling her Kohei Red Blood Cell? And that, dear children, is because that's what was in the sub, or in the original Japanese, because a Kohei is a junior student, basically, whereas a Senpai is your elder, a Kohei is your junior. But the term Kohei has not entered into the otaku lexicon yet. We're not using it in me. Japanese yet. honorifics, boys and girls. Well, they use senpai, though. They, like, they referred to the red blood cell senpai as senpai, but they didn't refer in the dub. They didn't use the term Kohei. They just uh, they flipped it up by just using the term, like, junior and didn't really... Yeah, just uh, calls her a junior, and they cut that part of calling her Kohei out of the dub. Uh. So. To be fair, I think at this point in time, everybody at least understands senpai and what a senpai is. Exactly. Um, in terms so. of kohai, that's technically not an honorific, I don't think. Well, that's just, like, a term for who it is. It's not like, like, because senpai is, like, red blood cell senpai. Mm-hmm. Like, you understand, that's, I don't think they usually do that with the kohais, though. No, they haven't. I haven't heard a show where they've used that in the, in the dub No, yet, I'm but... saying even in Japan they don't do that, is what I'm saying. I'm not sure. Uh, all I, I know I've is... never seen it, so. Okay. So, um, but, again, that's just a, a change on the dub port, on the uh, writing portion of it. But, yeah, Janie's um, uh, real moment to shine is honestly in that final episode where she's basically given up all hope that, mm-hmm. you know, we're, ch- we're two red blood cells transferring oxygen to the entire body. We can't do it all. Everyone else is fucking dead because there was a uh was it there was hemorrhagic shock and we've lost everybody there was a head and it it sounded like how it was described it sounded like a head injury uh something like that yeah because it happened up in the the crane in the brain area yeah it was in the head area so yeah gotta get that blood transfusion but Mm -hmm. uh yeah so uh, for that part janie did both the the drier part and the really freaked out part real uh pretty well uh, I'm much more impressed, uh, honestly, by Kira Buckland's performance, because, like Gigi was saying, she's just got something in the way she speaks, is that she's authoritative, but she's still young-sounding. Like, she didn't sound like she was really that much older than uh, regular blood cell. She just sounded like she was more put together, just had her shit together, and that uh, lent itself to just kind of a fun character to listen to. And uh, because of that big sister affectation, uh, it also uh, helps work off of regular Red Blood Cell, whose voice actress we'll talk about in a bit. And I'm glad that she continuously showed up in the show to kind of, you know, explain where to go and give hope, like, oh, it's okay, oh, you're doing your best, and I trust you, I'm going to give you this junior, I don't think you'll fuck it up. So, yeah, Kira did a good job. Who also did a good job? Xanthi Win for the win. There's nothing more adorable than the platelets in the show, and that was by design. Like Lilac, all I knew about the show before jumping into it was Otaku were, like, really obsessed with platelets for some reason. And I yeah, they were so why. obsessed when the show first came out and then, then the platelets appeared in the show. Like, there was memes and images all over the place of the platelets. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? I know, right? It's, it's like, okay, I understand anthropomorphizing body parts. Like, every, okay, animes anthropomorphize everything. Why are you people losing your mind over platelets? Like, why not something like mitochondria or bone marrow? Like, why platelets of all things? And, okay, that's why, because the show made them cute. And Xanthi does play it really cute. Um, Kind of also, like Gigi was saying, uh, not always going to get voice actresses who can do not only little girl voices, but cute little girl voices without being Mm -hmm. a slight bit obnoxious. Like, it's taken a while to get a good register... And Xanthi is just naturally that cute and adorable. Like, that's why she was Menma. That's just the way what she's really good at. And I hope she keeps doing it well into she her 70s. As, she precious as Menma was it, protect Menma. Absolutely. Um, and who would protect Menma would be Macrophage. Uh, Laura Post. Best anime mom in the world. Just, like, absolutely been the best anime mom in everything that she's been a mother in. And in this show, she gets to do something a little different. It does sound like she's adding a falsetto to her voice. Like, she's already got a regular feminine voice, but she's also pitching it up just a little bit high. I can't reach that pitch. But, yeah, it it sounds like she's putting on an affectation above her normal speaking voice that it does fit. It Because it undermines how violent the character is, or how, yeah, how effective the character can get with that machete. And it, machete, directed by Robert Rodriguez. 
Uh, okay. That's the entire... <laughs> The character, yeah, so the character uh, doesn't honestly get to do too much, uh, at, like, as far as, like, character development goes. It's more like the, uh, when Macrophage shows up, shit gets done. And, oh god, does shit get done when Macrophages are around. I don't know what the plural form is. So, yeah, so we call this group the Blood Sisters. And, you know, good, good on the sisterhood here. The Divine I, I, Secrets of the Blood Sisterhood. I have a stupid joke. Oh, dear. What now? Saul's at work, directed by Robert Rodriguez. <laughs> so you brought that much that He'd do it, too. He'd do it. He would 100% do it, too. And consider, like, the amount of... <laughs> like, I watched this off of Netflix, okay? And there mm -hmm. is warnings for fucking violence and gore. Yep. So, yes. <laughs> but it would all be with an entirely CGI background. <laughs> God damn it. You're right. Anyway, so um, yeah, so that's what I got. Um, so Hardy, do we uh, do we get to pick a favorite out of this group too? Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't really, I don't really have uh, the same affection for these as I did for MK. But starting off, um, it's funny you should mention that Laura Post pitches her voice high because she's mentioned in interviews that. Um, Characters like, like she played, like Nozomi in Love Live and Kasumi in Persona 5 Royal uh, is actually closer to her actual voice. Mm, okay. Yeah, she actually needs to pitch down in order to play uh, characters such as, as, Rag as Ragio and, um, and, and Isabella. I can see it. I can see that. Mm -hmm. And so, I still don't think Macrophage is, is really her natural voice, mm -mm. but it sort of adds this sort of, you know, whimsical, um, like fairy godmother type uh, hit to it, and uh, it's it just makes it hilarious as she's as she's dancing around in this full maid outfit, slicing uh, germs in half, blood splattering everywhere, going, oh dear, I hope I hope everyone will be okay. Ex explain to me the logic of blood being splattered on characters that are already blood. Wizard did it. <laughs> Do each of the cells have their own internal cells? Are there cells at work working on the 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 cells? Look here, the purpose of white blood cell is for him to get covered in fucking bacterium blood all day, every day at this point. Every Fuck. episode. Every episode he's died with the blood of his enemies. God. Yeah. But, uh, but no, Laura's really entertaining. Um, uh, one thing that Kira's performance as Senpai reminded me of, uh, sort of like a less bitchy Umi from Love Live. I haven't watched Love Live, so I can't. Me either. You haven't? Me neither. No. Well, that uh, that makes me feel yeah. better because I haven't either. Well, the season, okay, the good. season one dub is kind of hard to come across in these days. But no, you're talking about deeper voices from Kira Buckland that that she kind of gave me Umi vibes. Um. Which is which is fine. Um, Jeannie Tirado, I like the contrast in between her first episode and her second because mm -hmm. she's sort of like this robot, just not uh, just doing what she's told and um, and kind of not showing any respect to her senpai. And uh, and then the second one, she sort of has this mental breakdown when she realizes all is when she thinks all is lost. And then at the end, she. She realizes that uh, the error of her ways and apologizes to her, and it's all it's all really nice and everything. Yeah. So, um, but unfortunately, she comes in sort of like at the very end, and so she doesn't really get to make too much of an impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of do but, wish she had a little bit more screen time because obviously we would probably have much more to say. But I mean, her her, her introduction really is to give regular red blood cell uh, an entirely new dynamic and it is a fun dynamic i will grant them that right uh one thing i did appreciate about the show itself though was that uh you kind of get worried what happens to kira's character during the head injury mm -hmm. and then if you pay really close attention you'll see that she does survive yes the very she yeah because she runs up to him afterwards and uh and sithy win as the platelet all the platelets are adorable yes um they're just so cute, and and when you see them, and they're and they're having heat stroke, and the white blood cell gives them tea, and uh, 
Hardy, do you wish to protect them as well? With my life. Heck yeah. Yeah. Protect platelets forever. Mm-hmm. Especially in real life, because hey, you cut yourself, they come in handy. That's true. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, moving on, we have our final two main characters. All right. We have. All right. We have White Blood Cell. He is specifically. He's also Neutrophil. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is number U dash one one four six specifically. Uh, he is a white blood cell whose main job is to cut down germs and bacteria and viruses. <laughs> Another day, this a slice fucker. and slice thing. This Filthy fucker. germs and viruses show your ugly face. Yeah. Oh, uh-huh. this character. Mm-hmm. And then we have. Oh boy. <laughs> Another day for an O2O2. If I'm saying this right, erythrocyte, a yes. red blood cell, unit number AE3803. She is pretty new at the job when she first, uh, when we first start the show out. She is clumsy, she gets lost, and she basically gets in a whole bunch of trouble and has to have white blood cell, uh, uh, bail her out of trouble. Fun fact, if anyone notices the hair loop that she's got, Mm-hmm. She's actually a sickle cell, which is why she gets lost all the time in the body. Oh. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That's okay. interesting. That... Yep. Sickle cell is what I... This, this bitch gets lost all the time. Mm-hmm. Right. She, she seems physically incapable of following the map. Ever. Right. Yeah. So anyways, playing white blood cell, we have Billy Kometz. Playing red blood cell, we have Jeremy Lee. Billy Kometz, you've heard as uh, the main character in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Diamond is Unbreakable, and the main character in Promare. Red Blood's uh, Sherman Lee, obviously you've heard as Lucy Hartfelia in Fairy Tale and Asuna in Sword Art Online. Uh, let's start like we did. Uh, Noah, you go first. Well, okay, so one thing I didn't really mention at the beginning when we were talking about script and direction is that um, because this was picked up for Netflix, uh, in North America at least, uh, I felt like the dub was making its best attempt to make the show as uh, a- applicable to a widespread audience as possible. And what they do to is they cut out a lot of the dialogue that it mentions, like, kill or murder a lot of time. There's a lot of, like, uh, when the cancer cell shows up at one point, in the sub, it was something like, um, I, I want to find the exact line here, it was, uh, you know, I'm going to murder the three of you, and but they changed that to, I'm going to tear you through this world. So why I bring that up is because with these two characters, um, they're also played up to be a lot more applicable to a widespread audience. And by that, I mean really, really fun to watch in contrast to each other. Like, this is the dynamicism that carries the entire show throughout. If we just had, like, vignettes of different characters and didn't have the through line of red and white blood cell playing off of each other, we would not have as fun of a show as we have. Starting especially with Jeremy. Oh, my God. I wish I could have watched... Cheremy's voice acting performances. There are some performances that are just so gleeful and so fun to listen to that it's almost like you can hear them dancing around in the recording studio. And that's what I get out of Cheremy's Red Blood Cell, who is perky and clumsy when she needs to be, but she's still sympathetic. Like, you don't hate uh, this character for being clumsy and annoying. You absolutely want the best for them because they're just trying their hardest. And in every episode, Cheremy gets different ways to show that she's trying her hardest because she never gives up she is always trying to transfer that box of oxygen to the cells or squeezing her way through tight places or taking the nutrients where they need to go and again throughout the entire thing i just enjoyed listening to her entire performance uh same thing on billy kometz's side and it's kind of because he has two modes he's got kill everything mode and neutral nice guy mode and he plays both of them really well um like he gets uh he gets scenes where he's uh incredibly uh, uh protective of red blood cell and you know absolutely decimates whatever bacteria is going after her and then you get like the cancer episode where he has this very comforting speech about how uh, sympathetic he is that cancer cell has to be destroyed and that you know it's like it, I'm just doing my job so yeah Billy plays up the this character who uh, I, I honestly don't know how dynamic the sub was because I didn't listen to that. 
but I definitely highly recommend watching the White Blood Cell and Red Blood Cell and Dub because they absolutely carry this show. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. Did you just fucking say they oh. carry the show? Fuck you, Noah. No, I can't. No, you can't. I'm sorry. You're too far away, and you'll never get to me. <sighs> that was the worst. All right, bye. No, I'm surprised you Noah. caught that. <laughs> no, why? <laughs> no, why? Because, <sighs> I, I don't know. Because <laughs> I don't know. All right, Noah. It's how I was <laughs> born. <laughs> Every day's a struggle, but I gotta pull through. I hate <laughs> all of you. Gets... Every day's a struggle with. Every day's a struggle with Noah, and somehow we have to pull through. God damn. <laughs> um, all right, uh, I'm gonna start with Jeremy first. Um, <laughs> this goober, Red Blood Cell is just always so chipper, very hardworking. Bitch gets her ass lost every fucking time, but um. She's very determined in wanting to do her best, um, and Jeremy, I think, portrays that very, very well. <laughs> I like the episode where Red Blood Cell is like, I'm gonna do this all on my own, because everybody keeps helping me, but I need to put my best foot forward. And she magically somehow manages to pull through by herself, quote-unquote, because White Blood Cell's fucking following her. <laughs> um, and trying to help her along the way without her noticing. Um, but Jeremy's just very sweet, very adorable, very peppy. Most of the personality of this character and the voice that Jeremy gives her does remind me of Lucy Harfelia. Um, except for Lucy has more of a sassy, sarcastic attitude sometimes. Red Blood Cell does not. She's just, like, very peppy, very energetic, sometimes oblivious to everything. Um, but I also really, really love her dynamic with um, Billy's white blood cell. Um, you know, but I really love the dynamic between Jeremy and Billy because these are very two distinct personalities and they mesh very well together. To which, transitioning into Billy, I want to make a fucking Ferdinand von Eyer joke, but I can't because this is not a Ferdinand von Eyer character. <laughs> And I know Gigi will be the only person who appreciates that reference right now. Or a, or a Gallo or a Gallo Timo's character. Oh no, Gallo is not a Ferdinand von Eyer character. <laughs> Gallo is not a Ferdinand von Eyer. Uh, the uh, other, the only other one that I, the one time I made the <laughs> fucking Ferdinand joke is um, during Iramacoon because his character Asmodeus Alice, very much in terms of personality and voice, is extremely similar to Ferdinand von Eyer. But I digress. No. <laughs> Fucking Billy. Oh my god. The more and more I get to talk about Billy Comets in different freaking roles, the more and more joy I get out of it. Because <laughs> um, White Blood Cell is a very interesting character. Um, Noah's right. He has two different modes. He has neutral nice guy and then I'm gonna fuck shit up. <laughs> like, it's two modes. And... My impression, my first impression of the character of White Blood Cell, I would think would have a much more um, flatter, more deadpan tone of voice. So I was surprised with what Billy gave for that performance, because that's just the impression of the character itself that I got. Um, but I think it works very, I think it works pretty well, honestly. Like, again, I think my favorite parts with Billy, though, is whenever he just go straight up is like, Target is sighted! Going for the kill! Like, with with just, like, straight face, going for the kill, and then just, like, once he's done, blood all over his fucking uniform, and it's just like, oh, yeah, nice to see you again. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's, he's very... He, he's a war hero he's very, who has gotten just desensitized <laughs> to the violence by this war point. Hero? Shit! No, he's just very, like, calm, cool, nonchalant, like, is doing his job. And I will admit, Babby White Blood Cell, even though it is not Billy voicing it, is very cute. Mm. Babby White Blood Cell is adorable as shit. Milo Sight, um, a junior form Milo's... of the White Blood Cell that has not matured properly yet. Thank you. Thank you, Nurse Noah. Well, um, I was going to point, point out on that episode, that, uh, like, in that, uh, that flashback episode, the sub has Red Blood Cell calling Baby White Blood Cell, like, Big Brother in the... In the yeah. You know, calling out it's to him. Cute. They don't keep that in the dub. Like, there's no none of Gee, that. Yeah, I wonder uh, why. 
brother sister kind of time. And I'm glad they didn't too. Cause, like, no, there was one time where the um, there is one time where the um, where the the oh my god, the fucking word Xanthi's character platelets platelet platelet. Thank you. There is one time where the platelets do go like, oh, hey, big brother's over there. Yeah, they do that for the white They're... blood cell, um, but they also call red blood cell big, uh, yeah, big sister in the sub. No, uh, no, I'm just telling, I'm just saying, that's, that's just giving that. Um, anyway, no, like, bottom line for me, though, with Billy, the more and more I watched the show, the more and more I stupidly fell in love with this character. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? I'm okay with this. I think, weirdly enough, this is probably my favorite performance of the show. Really? I think so. Like, because, like, most of the character, the character is just this, like, straight face kind of character that has these two modes, but Billy manages to give him at least a little bit of emotion, and it's not... And it's just enough to get it across instead of it just being completely deadpan and flat like my original impression of the actual character is. So I actually do appreciate that a lot. Um, but no, both of these characters are, are actually a lot of fun, and I think their dynamic is extremely strong, 100%. But it's fun. Uh, I'll keep this brief, but first I will tell a very short story about how when we decided we were going to do this episode months ago... Chris was like, come on. Boyfriend was like, come on, I'll watch this with you. Like, it'll be fine. I was like, all right, whatever. So we watched the first episode where I promptly fell asleep through. Um, and then he woke me up at the end and he was like, see, look, see, look, they're cute. You can ship them together. Don't you want to ship them? And I was like, I, I, I kind of do, but I also don't. I was like, no, but that's why they don't call them to each other. Big brother and big sister. So if you wanted to yeah. write their love story on fanfiction.net, you could. Oh, God. Oh God. Look it up. AO3, that bitch. No, 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 no. No, no, it's... Okay, so we made a fanfiction.net reference in the Paranoia Agent episode two days ago, and then I think it was Ahmad called Andrew out for it and said, You old motherfucker, AO3.net. You right, that did happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ahmad called Andrew out so hard on that. It was Andrew's great. still over. So, so th Andrew's so th still over you, party. G Round four, shut the front door. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Gigi, for showing uh, showing your seniority. We'll call it seniority instead of... What the fuck? <laughs> I also said both, so get bent. <laughs> I'm joking. Dude, she's going to kick your ass when she sees See? you this weekend. And I, I will fully deserve it. Mm -hmm. By the way, si side tangent, the discussion about undercover sluts here made me pull my school live uh, box set off of the shelf here and be like, which character was it I get? And I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, the stockings <laughs> with the... The, uh, the only girl with it. stockings, of course. <laughs> yeah, yep. Yeah. Anyway. anyway, that's a thing. Um, white blood cell, Billy Kometz. Um, like I said before, all the normal sounding boys sound the same. So he sounded like everybody else to me, basically. Um mm -hmm. Sounded very determined, kind of heroic, but the heroicness was kind of downplayed. Is that right? He kind of had like an Aaron Dismuke tone going on for a little while. I was kind of interested thinking that it was Aaron Dismuke. And then I remembered this was a California dub and it wouldn't be. Um, but he was, it's all right. I, I have nothing bad to say about it. Um, I spent the entire anime thinking that the red blood cell was Erica Mendez. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot you said because, that. Because uh, every California dub has to have at least one Erica in it, and I just found out while we were recording that Erica <laughs> Mendez is actually in this dub, so I'm not wrong. Uh, You're not. You're not. She's photo. the regular. She's the regulatory T. Yeah. Um. I thought Sheremy was very cute. I really like Sheremy Lee, but every time I hear Sheremy Lee, I think of fucking Sergeant Frog, and that will never, <laughs> that will live and wow. die with me. <laughs> Wow, talk about old She was the, the human girl. Oh, she was the, the um, girl. The, sister? the sister. She was the sister. The sister, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. the pink, the pink-haired sister. Yeah, the pink-haired sister. God, that dub. Now for that's a show that absolutely fucked with the dialogue. That was the best. Oh the dub for Sergeant Frog is really great, and you can stream it on Funimation, which I thought it went out of print, but you can still stream it. So that's good. You should all go listen to the Sergeant Frog nice. dub, especially the one where they talk about fucking jelly beans, and I <laughs> laughed so hard I almost threw up. It was fucking fantastic. <laughs> Shit. Um, you're making me sad, Gigi. Want to watch it this weekend? They did dub more than... 
Oh, we, well, we can't watch it, but they only dubbed three seasons of that show. I know. Oh, no. I was, I'm was sad. Anyway. Um, Anyways. I thought she played a really cute fangirl. Uh, one thing I will say is that she has many, many lines that are very, very repetitive. And mm. although she tried to do a different okay. thing for each line, like, even if just a word were different, it kind of all had the same kind of, like, up and down tone to me. Like, it all, if you were going to do it musically, it'd be the same notes, just with different lyrics. I don't know. I don't know if that was, like, an effect that was something she was going for or not. I personally just found it kind of very repetitive. I mean, it's fine. It is what it is. Saturday morning cartoons with cell blood. So that's all I got to say. Yeah, I was watching the last two episodes and I'm like, you know, you could turn a drinking game into every time she says oxygen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you really could. You could also turn it into a drinking game every time she gets lost and then your liver would kill you. <laughs> Trying to deliver said oxygen. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, I really like these two. There's this there's this tweet that's going around now uh, which it has one character who's really short and he's kind of hunched over. It has another character who's really tall and he's standing straight and uh, the hunched over character is labeled as stupid and the tall one is says supposed to be the same one but is also stupid. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I think this perfectly describes these two. Yeah, I see it. Yep. Um... But yeah, no. Starting off with Billy, he has two modes. He has ultra kill or ultra chill, and um, <laughs> he's a. It's a fun way to put that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I just love how he can go from zero to spastic and in like zero seconds flat. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a different take on his other sort of more energetic characters, mm -hmm. such as Josuke or or Gallo, but. Um, but yeah, it's it's fun it's watching him play off of Cherry. Which Cherry, you could tell she just had an absolute ball mm -hmm. in this one. I mean, I I think this could have been a Golden Ham contender for sure if we had a chance to listen to it when uh, in the year that it came out. Right. Because um, you know she's just always chewing the scenery. She's always just messing up and 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 uh, and just goofing around. And, uh, but she can get serious when she needs to, especially those last couple episodes. And one part that I really appreciated is when, uh, the heat stroke episode, when, when White Blood Cell tells her, protect the platelets, and she goes, she shouts out, with my life! <laughs> yes, that was very it's cute. Like it's... So determined, it's like, I will protect these children! Yeah, no, considering she's a, a red blood cell and has no, uh, combative abilities. Red blood cell um, is basically all of us when it comes to the platelets. I will protect this child with my life. Mm -hmm. She's she's basically like channeling us. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, yeah. No, I really like these two and I really like how they play off each other and uh, I don't ship them. I don't But either. I can see I can see why people might mm -hmm. because Who they do else? they do they deserve each other. They're 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 wonderful childhood friends that they don't fucking remember they are childhood they friends. They don't even remember. What are the odds that also he's the it's, same it's way? sort of it's sort of uh, physically impossible for that sort of thing to happen, so This is an anime. Anything can get shipped. Well if they're trying to be as realistic to fucking to the human body and human anatomy as possible, it's not gonna fucking happen. Anyways, that's uh that's basically wraps up our um our coverage of the characters, do we have any final pro final diagnosis? Uh, Nurse Noah. Every time! Oh, this is, um... <laughs> I Don't, love hey, it. Hey, hey you, you, we've all seen Meet the Parents. Boys can be nurses, too. And, in fact, they are very valuable. So, I don't want to hear any... Is that, does... Not wrong, but it's still funny. Does, Trying does to see you as a the... nurse character. Noah, does that make you gay fucker? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on! <laughs> The... Yay. <sighs> it's been a while since I've actually seen that movie. Anyways, the the show is uh, is more my bag. It sounds like than uh, a couple other people in this call, solely because I do love to learn. Like I, I am hardcore on the edutainment portion. Like I, I'm one of those nerdy guys who uh, liked watching educational shows on PBS and is 
totally fine with uh, like the Magic School Bus being played on repeat in our house. So this show was definitely had a high bar to clear in being both educational and fun at the same time. And like I said, the adaptation of this dub is really liberal, uh, more so than a couple other shows that we've talked about recently, and it's played for benefits. Because not only does it take out some of the more violent terminology uh, to, you know, just make it a little cleaner, but it also peppers up the dialogue and makes people's lines flow a little bit better. So that in and of itself is kind of an accomplishment, because this is such a dry show otherwise with the medical information that they could have easily just phoned it in and done it all for line for line, but nope, they, they really turned in a solid performance and writing on this. So, do I recommend watching this? I do, I just don't recommend marathoning it like some people in this chat did. Space it out, watch it over, like, you know, a couple episodes a day. I feel called out. Just a I little. also feel called out, but it's also just fair. Just a little. <laughs> So, so take two and see you in the morning. Uh, better make it three, just to be safe. Okay. Uh, Nurse Stephanie, final thoughts. Uh, I feel called out. I marathoned the whole fucking thing today. It's, this is how my life works. I have also been doing like recordings for almost two months now. Hey, at so... least you didn't make the, the mistake of trying to marathon all of March comes in like a lion in one day. Look, if I was on that episode, I would have made the mistake of marathoning March Comes in Like a Lion. <laughs> Let's be real. Oh, because, God, don't, don't. Because do I have. That. No. I know I shouldn't, but, like, my method always is just, like, I want to make sure they're fresh in my minds. You know what I mean? Because yeah. Lord knows what happen could happen between then and now. But anyway, um. <laughs> this show probably will not be for everybody. I'm kind of in the middle on it. <laughs> In terms of the show itself, because, I mean, I do like the educational stuff. It's it's great. It's fun. Like, I did learn a couple things. But starting out, it was a little... The show itself, not the dub, mind you, was a little slow and kind of dull to me. Um, so maybe I'm not 100% the intended audience for this one. Um, I got into it more and more as the, the show went on, but um, it's not going to be for everyone. In terms of the dub... The dub, I think, is it, it's a solid dub. There are some minor kinks here and there, probably in terms of um, <sighs> like little maybe babby moments in the writing, not too severe, um, and some of the mixing and sound effects, uh, uh, vo vocal effects that were put in because they got like Gigi pointed out earlier, much earlier, they do get repetitive and can get kind of tiring. Um, but I, I think the biggest credit that I really will give this dub is that they have some fun dynamics. A lot of these characters have such fun dynamics. Whether you have Jeremy and Billy, whether it's <laughs> Robbie and Ray or Robbie and Morgan, whether it's um, Jeannie and Kira with Jeremy. Like, the dynamics in all of the episodes are a lot of fun. Um, and the performances, I think, are rather solid. Uh, but overall, solid dub. It, the show itself is not going to be for everybody. N not even. Um, so it'll be hit or miss for people, but for the English dub, I think it is a solid, solid effort. Uh, Nurse Gigi, your final diagnosis. I think your time would be better off spent watching Grey's Anatomy or possibly <laughs> Cartoon All-Stars Just Say No or whatever the actual <laughs> title of that is. It's a lot shorter and it's a lot funnier. Uh, or just yeah. watch Magic School Bus all the time. Yeah, I'll switch the difference and watch the Inside Ralph the episode. Yeah, uh, even that, <laughs> which I've never, I've seen one episode of Magic School Bus. It's got to be better than this. Um, what? What? Uh, you know, I'm gonna side well, with Gigi on that a little bit here. No, 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 no. The the I've only seen one episode. Thing, Gigi, we are watching more than one episode. When oh come to no! God. <laughs> I'll fall asleep on your couch again, like I did watching my neighbor Totoro. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, this, nice. this show was obviously not for me. Uh, this dub was okay. It was passable. It's not the best dub I've ever heard. It's not the worst dub I've ever heard. Um, I disagree with everyone else. I think that it could have taken more liberties unless this was something that a licensor specifically said, hey, make it like a textbook. And so I fell asleep right. like I would in science class at school. And yeah, I, mm, it took me a long time to watch this. 
I watched most of it while I was packing a suitcase just because I was like, I can put this on in the background and listen to people and not have to watch things explode and get bloody everywhere, which is another issue that I had with it. But it wasn't an issue that I had with the dub because I don't like violence. Show this to your kids. Make them learn something. Get them scared. Make them take their vitamins and shit. I don't know. And wear their mask. <laughs> wear your fucking mask. This wasn't for me. Um, gonna, but I'm sure there are no, many other people who whole, this was for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There will be a whole generation of medical students who say, like, yeah, ten years ago I, I watched Cells at Work and it just really made me want to enter the field. <laughs> how much you want to bet that someone's going to do a fucking thesis on this show? Hey, man. And how they probably already is. have. And they probably have done it already. I mean, you're right. You probably has. Happened, like like so. I said, it's not it's not a yeah. bad dub. I just personally didn't mm-hmm. enjoy it as much as I could have. I mean, that's fair. Again, this isn't going to be for everybody, honestly. Well, my final diagnosis is that I had a really good time. Um, I didn't really pay much attention to the educational stuff. I just love the witty banter from all the characters. Um, is it the best show out there? No, but you could do a whole lot worse. It's a fun 13-plus OVA episode show, and... Um, if you want to check out the dub, then absolutely positively. And it's also got both a second season and a spinoff coming soon if you want to uh, check those out because the spinoff is supposed to be uh, the cells dealing with a non-healthy body. Someone who drinks and eats too much and smokes and does questionable things. So How it, how this show managed to get a second season in the spinoff anime surprises me, but apparently I can see why too. There's as a... far as the manga is concerned, there's like tons of spinoffs. Mm. Mm-hmm. But anyways, it's not he... like there's any... is there <clears throat> like anything else that Studio David could be doing. More JoJo hypnosis, Mike. Nope, nope. That too. I mean, because we still need Stone Ocean. Thank you very much. That needs to happen. Soon. They might not do Which hypnosis, I think it might. Mike. I might be wrong on that. They did Ensemble Stars. They did do Ensemble Stars, didn't they? But anyways. <laughs> If you yourself would like to, uh, I'll write you a, a prescription for, uh, for the English <laughs> dub of Cells at Work. You could. I like this segue! Go to the pharmacy, here's your prescription! <laughs> yes. If you would like to watch. It's called Cells at Work. If you would like to Sorry. watch the, uh, the dub of Cells at Work, it is available on both Netflix and Funimation.com, thanks to the collaboration between Funimation and Aniplex these days. Consider Papa Sony has to. Make them wear the get along shirt. Uh, <laughs> if you would like to own it, you can purchase it from rightstuff.com. Just be aware that you're paying Aniplex prices and it will be very, very yeah. expensive. Unless you live in the UK in which you can get it for a much more reasonable price. Um, as far as what we do is concerned, you can listen to us either on YouTube, which you're probably doing right now. Or we're also on pod. Uh, 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 what was it? Uh, you can Podbean. also listen to us on the go with Podbean, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts, which is another, which could be where you are listening to us right now too. Yeah. Who knows? In fact, if you want to help us uh, donate to us to help us along, you can, we have a coffee account which you could donate to, and we also have a Patreon account. Um, Patreons get uh, advanced episodes; they get to be entered into the uh, episode raffle. And, uh, and speaking of our patrons, let's list them out right now. Uh, we have B. Morris, Michelle Travis, Miraculous Corazon, Victor Mayboroda, Carly Leistakow, Crimson Echidna, Jacob Wilson, J2, a.k.a. Jared, Julia W., Marissa Lenti, Nico Robin, but with Yowie Hands, and Otaku Anthony. And so every time. time for Gigi, she loses her shit over Nico Robin but with yelling hands. Thanks, Jackson. <laughs> yes. <I'm crying>. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jackson, Jackson. We love you. God damn it. <laughs> All right. So we are running a little bit late, but I just want to say on behalf of myself, Dr. Spaceman Hardy, MD, and my medical staff, that's Noah Clue, that's Stephanie, that's Gigi. You can follow us all on our individual social media accounts or at Dub Talk Podcast on Twitter. Uh, final diagnosis. Uh, just thanks for listening. <laughs> Anything else we want to say before yeah. we go? 
Oh, uh, you can follow me, Noah Clue, on Twitter at Noah Clue. Uh, I like to make comments about how we should stop using the term anime and cartoons and just call it all animation, and also post few cute pictures of my kids. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. words, 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 words. Look, you were the brave soul to make sure you could spell the goddamn cell names and bacterium correctly. So I salute you. <laughs> That's where all my that's where all the brain juice went. I ain't got no. That's where all of the brain juice anymore. went. You're, you're you're allowed one. Uh, speaking of, my name is Stephanie. I'm also known as Lilac. Sometimes you can follow me on Twitter at Lilac Anime Review with review being spelled R E V U E. And I also have a blog, Life and Times at WordPress dot com. You can follow me on Twitter at Anime Palooza, or also subscribe, like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, YouTube dot com slash c slash Anime Palooza with a capital A. Where I talk about Udapri Shining Live, where I should be cheering in this commu event right now, but I took a break to record this podcast. Just kidding, I've been playing it the entire time, and nobody really knew. I'm about to say, bitch, you better be playing. I, like, I know you well enough. You're going to be replaying that the whole fucking time. Hashtag Andrew Wait. is over party four. <laughs> Shut the front door. <laughs> Shut the front door. And, and I'm Spaceman Hardy. You can follow me on Twitter at Spaceman Hardy. Funimation forums are gone, but I'm still a moderator over on the Discord. Um... I usually say I want to post pictures about goats and stuff like that, but I want to take a few minutes or just a little bit out of time, a little time right now at the end. Mm -hmm. Take care of yourself. Just everyone who's listening to this, please, you know, take care of your health and Mm -hmm. take care of, and be considerate of others. You know, if, just practice safe, uh, safe, healthy procedures. Please wash your hands, stay at home if you can, if you have to go out. Wear a mask and try to stay your best six feet away from people and just be smart. Be considerate to others. Be considerate to others yes. because there's everywhere we go, there's some jackhole idiots who refuse to wear their mask or they conveniently forget it. We're not going to get out of this unless you wear a freaking mask. Normally, I would make a. a, a a joke and call people you filthy heathens but considering what this episode is no 100 percent, please if we want this all to be over with faster mm-hmm. please yeah. please respect cdc guidelines mm-hmm. please it please follow them because we'll be able to if we all do our part we'll get out of this a hell of a lot faster right right it's like the song says we are working for you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so we just are. Mm-hmm. All right. And with are that, you working? What? Yes, I'm working. The, the song. Are, are, we are working for you. Yes. 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 All right. All right. With that, you know, uh, you are officially discharged from the Dub Talk Clinic. Cool. I fucking quit being a nurse. This is horrible. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of like the outfit. <laughs> I mean, look here. I know you're into that kind of stuff, Gigi. I'm not. And I would make a horrible nurse, so I'm going to go. Love your faces, but before I go, I want to say that that whole thing that Hardy just said, I thought he was going to make a joke and tell me to practice safe sex, so that was my joke that I just made right now. Bye. (laughs) Well, do that, too. Yes, do 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 that, that too, too. but, you know. (laughs) If you can. You're not wrong. You should also, like, practice good social distancing and wear your masks masks, and also have safe sex. Yeah. Preferably from behind. Preferably from behind. (laughs) (laughs) From behind and wearing hazmat suits, boys and girls, because, no. (laughs) I'm going to bed. Yeah. Oh, this could not be healthy for any of us. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Go Taku on, my friends. Good night, everybody. (laughs) 